Okay, excellent. All right. Um, so I guess I could do um, do a bit of an opening on this topic. So sure, please. when I went over your previous debate mm -hmm. and your videos, I think I picked apart three main sort of like like parts or like directions, I guess, of this whole like, I guess, argument about mandatory uh, schooling and education. Mm -hmm. um, number one, issues that you see with schooling as it exists today. Number two, issues you have principally against the concept of mandatory schooling. Mm -hmm. And then number three, your proposal for a model. Yeah, um, sure. And I think the, the best place to, to start out and probably I think a place that we agree on is everything about issues that exist right now in education mm -hmm. and in schools. So yeah. you mentioned things like exam pressure. I've done also videos in the past about things like standardized testing, for instance, and how negative and counterproductive they could be. Things like uh, kids having trauma from school as a result of bullying or discrimination and marginalization. Obviously, in society at large, minorities generally face worse outcomes, and this is true for schools as well. Um, things like overcrowding, poor funding, uh, the railroading of students into specific sort of like um, areas of, of teaching that they might not have an interest in past the point where it's necessary. Uh, overt disciplinary requirements that you think go like too far, bad management of school in general, um, negative um, loads of homework, and then like bad like sustenance and food and stuff in schools. Yeah. And uh, these are all things that I've heard you brought up, and I agree that all of these absolutely exist and should absolutely be something that should be looked into and should be solved as quickly as possible. Education is a super important part of any society, and we should ensure that educational institutions are in as good shape as they could be, and part of that is getting rid of as much as this as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and I think so far, I think we're, we're definitely on the same page here. Um, a little bit. There's a little bit of disagreement with the final portion of like uh, mm -hmm. of like educational institutions. Uh, I I tend to be a little bit suspect of of state run educational institutions, and I think we're going to get into this a little bit as to why. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and you know some of the things that you brought up here are, in my opinion, not just issues with with a specific schooling system uh, or a specific school in America, but they are the sort of natural, uh, the natural understandable progression of a system that prioritizes certain things and that has adopted a certain uh, philosophy, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my problems with, uh, with school, with like schooling as a whole are radical in nature because I see that the problems that are often brought up that are sort of agreed upon. And in fact, this is something that I read quite a lot of in preparation for this conversation was, uh, liberal perspectives and like sort of liberal education, educators perspectives on education. And I think you're correct in saying that like we agree on a lot of the like issues that are going on, but I think where we don't agree is why they're happening. And mm -hmm. I think that a lot of the issues that we see with the modern schooling system will never be solved because they are the natural product of the type of schooling system that we've built, the type of approach to learning that our society has. Um, mm -hmm. And I like to be sure uh, because it can happen in this conversation that there's like some conflation between terms like schooling, education, and even learning. Um, I don't think that education and learning are the same thing as schooling. I think there are all kinds of ways for people to learn all kinds of things. Um, there have been, you know, incredibly intelligent people who never, ever went to school. And in fact, were perfectly capable of doing complex mathematics and all that sort of thing. So we know that a school is not the only way uh, for people to learn. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that I got that out there before we got too far into this. Yeah, absolutely. There's a difference between mandatory education, just which is more about like learning subject material or skills and stuff like that, and schooling, which is a way by which to get to the education. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now, um, I'm going to cover a bit about the, the the second part and outline that and see, because I think that the thing you talked about, how, how some of these issues are inherent to education might be similar to one of the arguments I've identified of yours in regards okay. to why you believe mandatory schooling is bad. Sure. So what we can do is I can go through them and then you can say if that argument envelops the thing you were talking about previously or if that's still a separate thing. Sure. Um, so the four arguments I've, I've heard you talk about when it comes to mandatory schooling and stuff like that mm -hmm. is number one, you believe it's a violation of the child's autonomy. Number two, you believe that truancy and truancy laws are bad for families. No, and kids, obviously, they're part of the family. And number three, you don't believe kids get much from school. 
And number four, you believe that schooling is in large part state indoctrination and is something that you want to push against. Yes. Uh, and you include examples like making a good employee, making you join the military, making you go to prison, for instance. That's like three yes. of the sort of paths that um, some educational systems kind of push you into by virtue of being state indoctrination. Most, um, yeah. Yeah, I would mm -hmm. argue that most do, so, yes. Yeah, so of that last argument, is that kind of like what you were hinting at before? Um, when it came to uh, like a lot of the issues that you talked about when we, you know, about the why school is bad stuff. Yeah. Does it um, stem from that? Or? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of things stem from that fourth point. Um, yes. Do I think mm -hmm. that mandatory schooling can be an issue of, of, of student autonomy? Uh, I do actually think that that's frequently a case, but I don't think that's the main focus. Um, because I think there's a lot of ways that you can have like student autonomy still within a schooling system. And I would still have problems with the mandatory schooling system. And the reason okay. for this is, um, there, there's okay so there's a couple of ways that we can look at this um first of all like if we look into the history of of like and of course a lot of this is pulling from america because i tend to talk about american politics and that's where most of my takes are coming from but if we're just looking at america the uh the 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 found the sort of like definitive person in the history of america was a a 1830s politician by the name of horace mann you may be familiar with this guy um, and mm -hmm. he's largely seen as like a, a, a benevolent figure in American history. He's, he's, he's got a lot of schools named after him. He's called uh, the, the father of American public education. Um, and he was a representative who ended up basically leading the first push for public for major public education in America. Now, mm -hmm. um, his principles, uh, you know, he, he studied the Prussian school model, which the Prussian school model was sort of world famous for being a very imper imperial uh, school model. It was very much about producing useful Prussian citizens who could who could uphold the honor of their nation and whatnot. And he was very inspired by this. And it shows through in a lot of the things that he stated was his main goal in building, um, you know, in, in what he was building with education. An example of this is when he said that the purpose of schools um, was ultimately to like the, the purpose of the government was to act as a father of citizens and that the purpose of schools. And this was his like his main statement on schools was that they were supposed to promote social efficiency, civic virtue and character rather than encouraging just learning or sectarian ends. Now, I don't really know what he means by sectarian ends. Like, I don't know, maybe there were some like lefties or something at that time that he didn't like, or maybe there were some righties that he didn't like at that end. Mm -hmm. But I think that it's interesting that the focus of the, the entire core the, the basis for the American uh, educational system was not on learning, was not about making the most, uh, you know, capable and happy um, and fulfilled individuals um, or even the most knowledgeable or intelligent or critical thinking individuals, but was instead to focus on social efficiency, civic virtue and character. Um, and this is something that is that is seen again and again as as you sort of dig into um, critiques of education as you dig into conversations about public education is that there is an in, a, an inseparable economic element that's a part of public education and this economic element uh, this this you could say elephant in the room but the economic e element of schooling the economic mm -hmm. underpinning of schooling means that schools don't actually really serve the purpose that they say they do they're not actually there to uh to teach people to equip people to be good they're not even there to teach them how to think or how to think well instead what they're supposed to do is they're supposed to in the words of of a of a of a of uh louis althusser for example if i'm going to quote something um that they're designed to reproduce the conditions of labor which what that means is if you have an economy and you have a state that is built on top of that economy and that state puts into place an education system, well, they need a way to have workers to fill that economy. And if the state is not interested or is devoted to that particular type of econ economic system, then their school system is going to seek to reproduce the conditions of the economy. This economic factor is very hard to separate from schooling and that in and of itself colors how the schooling unfolds and how the schooling has been built how the laws have been built around schooling and also our general philosophy towards what the purpose of school is mm -hmm. okay that makes sense i guess the the main thing then would be that uh, i believe that largely especially out of the the 
you know, the things I listed off before of mm -hmm. things that we both identify of issues with schools bad mm -hmm. can absolutely be reformed out of it. So yeah. I'm not going to, it might be difficult for you to remember exactly like all the ones no, I listed out. Please, so please. I've sent you on in DMs just a list of things. Sure. Um, which ones of these do you think are like inherent to a school system? And for those of you who are watching, oh, yeah, I just copy don't see the DMs, obviously. Yeah, let me just. It, those are the, the, the ones I listed out previously with exam pressure. You know, trauma, discrimination, yeah. marginalization, overcrowding, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hold on one moment. One second. Let me just copy this down. Sorry, I just, if I open my DMs too much, it's going to get rid of your camera on the screen. It's uh, technical I know. limitations. So we have exam pressure, trauma, discrimination and marginalization, overcrowding, poor funding, railroading, overt disciplinary requirements, bad management, homework, and bad food. So bad food is like a side issue, really, um, in this particular mm -hmm. thing. Things that I think that are inherent to this is exam pressure, trauma, discrimination and marginalization, overcrowding, Poor funding, I think, is not necessarily inherent um, to all systems, but I think that it is almost, almost inherent um, uh, because of the the constant, uh, because of economic pressures. And I don't know that it's so much that the poor funding is a part of the, like, the establishment of schools, but it is most certainly a part of the, uh, it is mo most certainly a part of, or a continual struggle as a result of a capitalist economy, especially a late capitalist economy. Um, yeah, poor funding seems to be a consistent issue. Um, railroading is another one that is, is absolutely intrinsic to this type of schooling. Overt disciplinary requirements is, and is probably the biggest one on here that is, uh, mm -hmm. is an example of something that is inherent to this model because, um, you can't produce a good citizen without deciding what a good citizen is. And if there are people who, for one reason or another, whether it's racial, whether it's gender, whether it's neurotypicality, who don't fit that definition of what a good civic c citizen is, those people are going to be uh, harmed and disciplined. It is a natural progress of a, of a system that seeks to produce a certain type of citizen. Even if you broaden mm -hmm. those categories, there is always going to be people who don't fit that and who are going to be punished and forced into those positions. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those are the ones okay. that I would say there. Homework, I don't know that homework is intrinsic to this, um, but mm -hmm. I do tend to think that that it, homework is certainly influenced by this. Um, homework mm -hmm. is something that, um, that – uh, allows for the school system to sort of reach into the private life to uh, teach kids that, you know, basically your obedience to the school system extends even into your private life. Um, mm -hmm. And the reality is that, like, everything that I've seen doesn't seem to support homework as a particularly effective method of learning anyway. Um, mm -hmm. And it also, uh, like, the homework loads, which I believe in many cases do serve a, uh, a ideological or an economic function, um, these things can be incredibly complicated um, and make things worse for uh, for students who are impoverished or have rough family backgrounds who might be dealing with things at home. I think these these are sort of like ways that those students are uh, identified and pushed aside. So yeah, and okay. then bad food again. Like I don't think that the band the bad food one is necessarily. Um, I, I feel like that was more of like a side a side point. Um, and the bad management aspect that's oh bad management um yeah i mean i think it depends on what you mean by bad management like uh, what i would say is bad management is that that like the way that we design curricula leads to bad management of schools um it oh. leads to because of the because it, it because of the prioritization that's put in there the prioritization mm -hmm. is not on on individual children it is not on promoting the growth of that children and instead it's about okay how do we get the most number of children to check this number of boxes to, ch to hit these number of standards and these standardized tests and then we go from there so yeah okay yeah okay so basically uh you think that almost like all of these um homework borderline except for bad food are all like inherent issues with the with like a schooling i think most exists. of these are, um, are are inherent to the capitalist model of schooling yes um okay. and yeah there are other models of schooling i mean i even have a an in, we i don't want to like quote like j drop quotes at you but i think that there's a really there's a really really great great quote that at some point i'd like to read from emma goldman who wrote about mm -hmm. um this vi vision for a modern school um and this was even a um more 
uh, state focused solution, one which I <laughs> tend to have some some disagreements with. Uh, not not as much, not not completely state focused, but it was more than I uh -huh. usually tend to focus on. So we can at some point I'd like to 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 share that with you if you're willing, but we don't have to do that right now. Yeah. So I mean. I guess what I would say is I think that there are absolutely, uh, number one, are schools that succeed in fixing all of these things and that, that exist under capitalist mode of production, obviously, and that they absolutely like can be fixed. It can be something that can be amel ameliorated. So I'm just going to go through the list a little sure, bit here. Sure. So Please. when it comes to things like exam pressure, you can see plenty of schools having vastly different sort of number one styles of test taking if it's test taking that is marked externally so standardized testing or if it's testing that is done by a teacher that is familiar with you and the type of effort you put into and difficulties you might have with learning and your personal history and stuff like that that's obviously going to change exam pressure quite a bit if you feel like okay there's a human connection between where i write down on the paper and the grade i get because it's going through this teacher that I know and I have a social bond with and that they know my history. Whereas, okay, I have no idea what's going to happen because I'm going to write down here. It's going to go to some third party who I've never met in my entire life and who doesn't know me. And then I'm going to just be put like a fat number on it. That's and one part about this. And then point number two, um, a lot of schools will have very varying sort of like degrees at what age they decide to start with exams. And starting with exams earlier tends to exacerbate a lot of the exam pressure. So a lot of schools, and especially I'm going to be leaning a lot on for example, like Finland's model of education, because they, I think they're pretty much um, pretty, pretty close to solving, like, uh, if not have solved, a lot of the issues that we're talking about here. Oh, that's good and hear. by taking the exams later, you know, you prevent a lot of that pressure and it's just generally healthier towards a you know, better learning environment. Mm -hmm. When it comes to things like discrimination and marginalization, mm -hmm. it seems very difficult that this is like a problem that is tied to schooling. This seems more like a general societal problem that is expressed in all facets of society. Education and schooling is a facet of society, thus it will be expressed there more than something that stems from schooling necessarily. You, you, you have do, your, your thing right there. Do you, want me to, do you want me to wait until you list your responses to these or do you want me to respond to them as they come? Um, we can Which do them as they come. Let's go okay. with exam stuff. Yeah. So, so let's do, we can do exam pressure and then we can talk about discrimination, discrimination. Mm -hmm. So there's a problem that I see with, with the, um, the idea of just varying test styles and also, um, on the sort of solution of personalizing test results. So yes, while I do think there could be improvements to the process that could be made via making classrooms more personal and having actual like tutoring going on, um, like because mm -hmm. as we know like even in even in uh you know uh even in uh nordic country you know finland is modeled there there are still issues with um with you know teachers being being able to actually tutor their kids and actually be a teacher as opposed to sort of like a a a lecturer um but mm -hmm. but that's not that, again that that's a small detail but the, the the problem that we have here is that it runs into a issue with its involvement with the state and this is where, uh, again, there's some of the philosophical issues that I have with it. So with exam mm -hmm. pressure, um, I, at the current time, am unfamiliar with any models um, that can communicate the success level of education to legislators on a level of, of uh, on the state level. The reason why, why, um, why SATs and standardized testing have become so deeply ingrained in society is because they are very helpful to the state. They are, inc it's incredibly helpful to have. Um, I mean, this is why the state uses things like the ASVAB, for example, which here mm -hmm. in the United States, that's the standardized test that the military and any other government agency has all of their uh, employees go through. This is, that is not going anywhere. The ASVAB has been around. It is not going anywhere. It is very entrenched. And the reason for that is because um, it plays into the need to account. The, the state needs to be able to account what its citizens are doing so that it can it can correctly allay funds towards the economy or whatever. Um, this mm -hmm. economic focus means that I don't think that you're ever going to meaningfully alleviate exam pressure in the way that I'm talking about. You are always going to be ultimately setting a standard which students must go for. And this standard um, is has it has multiple issues. First of all, it conflates our actual values because if you set a standard, uh, then people will will strive for that standard, and that standard might not be forever good. That standard might not be good to begin with. I think in our country, the standard ideal s student is doesn't resemble anything that any of us want to be. Certainly not something that mm -hmm. I want to be. Certainly something that a lot of kids don't want to be. Um, the ideal student or the ideal citizen, um, you know, is 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 
always it always obedient always goes through the correct channels always does you know always participates and and buys and and participates in this economy and so when you have a system that is being asked to produce standardized results which it is that is what the fundamentals of the school system is you are always going to have the presence of even if they're slightly invisible or secretive you are still going to have that same pressure to meet a standard and anybody who doesn't meet that standard is either directly or indirectly going to be marginalized in that system and now you might mm -hmm. say like oh there's some things that we want to discourage or whatever but that's where things get really questionable because what does what does it say when we want to discourage this type of behavior? There isn't an agreement on what type of behavior is good. And this leads to an issue where you have a single body, which could have all kinds of reasons. We can we can acknowledge that this that state bodies um, regularly uh, abuse their power and that they mm -hmm. state what is what is most valuable to them when the state is setting that standard. Of course, they are going to set as the standard what is most valuable to the state itself. And okay. it's a it's a it's a it's a guess as to whether that state is actually going to be serving the interests of the people who are f forced to be a part of it. Does that make sense? Okay. I think yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, and I think that there's probably um because I, I I'm picking up on something here, which I think mm. that we should probably try to fast forward to um and let us try to speed run um this part of the discussion because I, I have a feeling that we might spend a lot of time on this one. It might not okay. be necessary in the end. So um. Let's just uh, think about something for a minute. So let's say, and this is going to sound a bit strange, and I'm going to tie back to this in the end, so don't worry, we're not going to like fine. forget about this, but putting things like like political capital and like the political paradigm, Overton window, stuff like that, aside for the moment, do you believe that there is anything that is like sort of mechanically impossible about a school under a, like a, a like in a, in a capitalist society uh, resolving all of these issues do you believe it's something like like inherit something like very mechanically that no matter where the political will was this still wouldn't be able to be resolved or is it largely hey political pressures political ideas and that kind of like seeps through into the educational system oh well, but i don't think you can divorce those things like i don't think that you can i i don't think that's a valid hypothetical i don't think uh, yeah that and just... that's why I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna bring it back to that in, in just a little bit but um, so you you were kind of like like implicit in that is the notion that you believe it is like it's like the political thing that's the main thing that's kind of like holding, like holding it back there, right? There's nothing like mechanically, well, like no, intrinsically. Broken. I think that those mechanics are like the mechanics are a part of the politics, right? The politics mm -hmm. influence the mechanics. Um, if you have a, if you have a a state that accepts that say like for example, let's use America for example. America is a capitalist country, firmly capitalist. There is uh like there is maybe i think there's one socialist politician in all in like who's who holds office or maybe two in mm -hmm. all of america that is a definitively capitalist country it is an ideological uh, agreement across the board okay and there are various mm -hmm. interpretations of, of of this capitalism but it doesn't matter the, at the end of the day it is a capitalist country which means there are mm -hmm. certain principles of the economy that must be fulfilled there needs to be workers or else the state will collapse because the economy will collapse so they build schools schools which are supposed to teach you the things that you need to become a worker that means that the mechanics is to produce workers not to produce mm -hmm. learning and learning might be something that you have to do in the process of producing a worker so I don't know, like to me, that seems very mechanical. It seems to me mm -hmm. that if the if the foundation of the machine of the school machine that you're building, if the foundation is we must produce workers because that is what the, the state and the economy demand of us. This is what we have to do. We need to equip workers to be able to work. Then that is the, the machine is built from the bottom up with this mm -hmm. goal in mind. And so I do think that mm -hmm. a lot of these things are ultimately inseparable from the machinery of the school system that we recognize. And that's why, like, it's not just it. It's not just like anarcho types that um, mm -hmm. advocate for radical changes to the school system. Even liberal educators, which was mostly what I pulled on for this for this conversation in my in my own mm -hmm. research, are are advocating for radical changes. I mean, deep changes because specifically because the way that we built it, the way that we built the schooling machine is not we don't we haven't put it into a place politically or socially where it can do anything but produce workers and so as a result that constant pressure it's like you're trying to put a gear into a into like a a bo a gearbox that doesn't have the same mm -hmm. slots so yeah okay that's, that's why i think a lot of these things are intrinsic to the mechanics and the mechanics are tied directly to the politics 
Okay, maybe I guess a, a better way that I could have asked that question is that, do you believe that there it, it is possible for there to be a social democratic country mm -hmm. that has largely resolved issues of things like exam pressure, overcrowding, poor funding, uh, railroading, bad management, homework, and I mean, food, well, we can throw that one in there. Um, there. There's a reason why I left out the disciplinary requirements because I'm going to loop back to that later. Sure. But do you believe it is possible for like a, like there, there to be a social democratic country that could have solved like those issues with this? Uh, maybe. Uh, I mean, I think it's possible for perhaps, uh, perhaps there to have been some, some alleviation of that. I, I personally uh, don't believe that the, that, that, the system will allow for those things to be solved i think it's conceivable in like a uh in almost like a fantasy situation that say like you mm -hmm. removed all the political pressure you you know mm -hmm. put this exact school in a in a capitalism free zone and said okay so this is out of the framework of the economy and what its purpose was built for in the economy it is like we're gonna we're gonna put it into the 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 dragon ball z hyperbolic time chamber and we're just gonna try and shuffle things around i believe that there is a pot that you could possibly solve or alleviate a lot of these issues. i certainly believe mm -hmm. that capitalist countries can alleviate these mm -hmm. um, issues, especially social democratic countries where there is at least some check to like corporate in, in interference and like and, and whatnot. But I just don't think that what I what I tend to think is that um, what we see is there are certain needs that need to be met and those needs will always override the desires of people reforming it. And there are a lot mm -hmm. of like well-meaning reformers, people who are like, hey, this is the thing. And a lot of them don't at least in my opinion, don't seem to realize that they're fighting against the core of the system that they're a part of. Um, mm -hmm. And that I think is can be very frustrating and also sad because I think there's a lot of people who mean very well, who really do care about the kids, but who do not, who have not acknowledged the fact that this institution serves a very specific purpose. And that purpose mm -hmm. is not what they're, what they're advocating that they like want to change it to. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, that does make sense. Um, yeah. Now, uh, there, there's like a, there, there's a reason why I asked that question. I want to build off sure. a little bit. But do you think that um, because I, I, I can see that you've done like a like a lot of really interesting and relevant research on this, um, but that we we try so we can because there's quite a bit of content to talk about here, right? Absolutely. There's three separate things. There's a lot of reasons. Uh, if we try to like keep it more like on our toes and more like uh, like shorter like back and forth, I sure, guess, sure. Um, so that we can move towards like resolving contradictions first and foremost, sure. that would be excellent. So the reason why I asked that question uh, is because it. It seems to be the case that, and I agree with this, that the, the main thing holding back the reforming of a lot of these issues mm -hmm. is going to be like, you know, political capital and stuff like that. Now, the argument that I would make here is that, sure, it is, it's unlikely that we will see, a, you know, a society or a country within the near future, especially for you guys in the United States, that will have resolved all these issues 100%. But... Uh, it is even less likely that we will see a situation where we have the political capital and the political paradigm and mindset in order to abolish school. And this is, you know, congruent with the characterization that you've laid out for school, right? As it being like this necessary part in the capitalist mode of production. Yes. So I would say basically for us to even get to the point where we could consider the ending of school as like a mandatory institution, mm -hmm. um, on that way, we will absolutely have gotten to points where we had the political capital and the you know the the resources necessary to be able to solve the like the issues on why we believe school is in a bad place right now sure. and that is where your other arguments come in right like your arguments about child's autonomy and bad for families and state indoctrination and stuff like this right a little bit um i think mm -hmm. that uh i think that sometimes this is a convert this is actually something i ran into in some of my conversation with um i don't know if you saw my conversation with econo boy um, but talking about how um, I think there's a little bit of a difference in how we approach this. Um, I I don't believe that there will ever be there will. In fact, I'm, I'm quite sure there will never be a state that ever abolishes an education system. Um, and that is because it is in the direct interest of the state to maintain an indoctrination system, even if it's a very even if it's a very progressive indoctrination system, they're never going to abolish it. You can never, like, you can't get a state to abolish itself. It doesn't happen. It won't happen. It, 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 is, it is against the structure of what a state is. States self, they have to self-perpetuate. This is a, uh, again, like, we're, without going into, like, the depths of theory, there is, there is structural issues within the fo formation of a state that states perpetuate themselves. They do. That is what they do. They will never destroy themselves. It, 
it's out of its own self-interest. Mm -hmm. um, and so as a result, like, I don't think that we're ever going to like abol like that we would abolish schools as a, like a, a we abolish schools, like that the, the, the Joe Biden is going to sign a school abolishment thing. Um, I mm -hmm. think what we have to do as, uh, as people who live in a, a, a world uh, that is constantly moving and people who are living in as we live in like a real world that isn't just the machinations of politics there are people with needs there are students that need to be taught and the way that we effectively abolish school is by functionally making it not necessary so there's mm -hmm. a lot of ways that you can go that I think that can be uh, like that we can push towards this but I don't think mm -hmm. that there's ever going to be a political faction that successfully abolishes mo like schooling as we understand it because that would require you to have i mean maybe maybe if the state gets weak enough if like the american state gets weak enough then you could push it and just say nobody's gonna you know people are going to ignore these orders or whatever um mm -hmm. but i don't even think that would be the case i think more what's more likely is that the state would just stop funding education entirely as it as it becomes weaker um mm -hmm. if in that sort of circumstance so in, in from my position um i'm not really interested in in like uh, whether or not people think that like it's politically pragmatic to try and abolish schools. I am interested in pointing out the, the structural issues with schools and then using that, using those critiques to point to illustrate us or to guide us to what we're actually, what we actually want to accomplish and what we can do in spite of, or with no regard to the state to fix the problems that are going on such that eventually, hopefully we won't ever need these sorts of, of of institutions that I think do a lot of harm to a lot of people. So yeah. Uh, okay, I get it. So um, then we've kind of worked work through the first bit I, I wanted to work through sure. here, I guess, which is that um, the arguments you made uh, principally don't really have anything to do with the, the quality of the educational institutions as they exist today, um, because your main arguments have to do with with the, the child's autonomy, the truancy, kids not getting enough from school and state indoctrination more than why school is bad in itself. And then we also we're kind of like on the same page that, uh, hey, if imagine we do ever get to a point where like school mandates are abolished way before that point, we will have been able to solve like the, the issues that we highlighted as for why school uh, as right now, why students right now like experience bad things often in like schools and stuff like that. Are we, are we kind mean, of on the same page with that? Kind of. I just think that I think that we're talking about different ways of solving them. I think the way that you're talking about when you say that we will solve these issues is that you imagine that we're going to reform schools until they're um, in a good position. But what I'm trying to mm -hmm. say is that I think schools are resistant to reform. I think that mm -hmm. states are very resistant to reform. Now, sometimes you can force them. Sometimes you can muster, like you said, the political will to force them to make changes. But the reality is that's not always the case. And these institutions are, by their structure, resistant to that type of change. They, you know, we can recognize that there are paths of least resistance and that there are incentive structures. So schools mm -hmm. have stayed. We've known for a hundred years in America that there are just disgusting flaws in our public school systems um, and nothing changes about them or very little things change. Or we have decades where the school system dips down and and just just completely underserves a generation of, of kids and this has happened over like over and over again in american sure. history. but you also see in, in in other countries that are you know capitalist as well they sure are that have like as well as all these issues as well so well, um, I, I, but, but i don't I, think they have i don't think they've resolved these issues i think that's a bro i think that's a very big claim no and they I haven't think resolved all of the issues yeah obviously. but i mean but that's the, that's but the thing though and you still they're on their way right that they're getting there well, but I don't, but that's the thing. I don't know that they are. Mm -hmm. This is where we, mm -hmm. this is the same point I actually got with Econo Boy, which is that what you're giving me is a sales pitch. You're selling me the idea that social Democrat countries um, are, have, are doing good enough that I should be able to have faith in the fact that they will come up against these, these harder areas of education mm -hmm. and, and proceed over them. And I don't think they will. I think what we will okay. see is that we'll see, um, and I think that this is, this is true with Nordic schooling models as well, that you will see uh, certain points of extreme like uh, outrage and frustration that will lead to a minor uh, reform or a political change that makes things slightly better. But the fundamental problems with the system still remain. It's still ultimately, even if it's nicer, even if there's better seats or if there's better tools or 
even if there's more t more learning going on the fundamental problem is that you still have a factory that is designed to produce workers for an economy you have a factory okay. that's designed to instill civic values which many people don't necessarily agree with and we know those civic values can change from leader to leader as the democratic process unfolds and that there's mm -hmm. a disconnect between the democratic product you know, but between the democratic process of like electing leaders and blah, 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 and what the actual values of the people who have to actually go through the education are. So okay. I, I don't buy the sales pitch that like a couple of reforms indicate that um, they're going to solve the fundamental problems. And, uh, and interestingly, like a lot of teachers don't seem to agree either. Like most of the people that I read here, I mean, hell, I even have like uh, I, I've even I've, I've even read just read through like a, 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 an email from an educator who, who emailed me after at the beginning of this drama who was talking about how a lot of the issues are beyond even the teachers beyond even those who want to reform because they're they're they've been systematized into um, into curriculums curriculums which are set by legislators which means that instead of a teacher if they want to change the system they don't have any way to actually change it themselves they don't have any way to meaningfully give that feedback they have to go through this democratic process. But the democratic process is not reliable for that type of change. And in the meantime, mm -hmm. these schools are producing everything from, you know, mildly liberal um, uh, American patriots to uh, Christian fundamentalist American patriots and beyond. And and even in even in social democratic countries, you still have um, that ultimate purpose of producing a good citizen to maintain stability. And I don't think that's necessarily mm -hmm. the right answer. Okay. Um, then I guess I have, a, I have a really simple question for you, which is going to like determine the rest of this discussion. So sure. um, two part question. And uh, number one, what are you trying to accomplish with this mandatory school discourse? And number two, why are you trying to accomplish it? Okay. Go. Step. Okay. Absolutely. So this is cool. This is like the good, good faith, bad faith conversation. Okay. So what am I trying to accomplish? I want people to think very, very critically about our about the system that we have i want people to begin to question what our our systems actually do what our what the structure of that system accomplishes and whether or not that's what we actually want with our lives with our society with our school systems so my goal is to challenge people with what i believe to be very salient critiques point out how these are structural, how these can be deeply ingrained, and point out that we need radical thinking, we need a radical approach to make a system that is better. Because the system that we have right now, I think is uh, is very detrimental. I think that it accomplishes certain things that some people think are good. Um, like, for example, I'm sure many people will be like, well, yeah, but like, our, our education system gets lots of people to get good grades on their standardized tests. Well, I don't necessarily value those standardized tests because those standardized tests are, we have separate values. I don't care whether somebody's good at a standardized test. I care whether somebody is a, a fully express, fully expressed human being who can learn, who feels, uh, who is liberated, who is, is able to pursue and build and innovate and live the full human experience. That's what I'm aiming to do. So I want people to think about these things and um, when I initially, when this whole thing initially started, I was just giving sort of my thoughts on, um, on people who take the position of school abolition and why I think there's validity to that position. Um, so yeah, that's my, that's my main uh, goal. That's, I think you said, what am I trying to accomplish and mm -hmm. why? I, I don't know if I answered both of those in one. And that's kind of like included, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Do, is, there, is there anything like, policy oriented or anything like policy type uh part of this or is it just well, i mean i don't know what you mean by that like like what do you mean by policy like see see this is another thing like, like maybe like for example like you know, maybe taking a look at like truancy laws or stuff like that or oh, I mean, trying sure. to pass like, some of like, like reforms within education that like prohibit certain of the like is, is there is there anything in that in like in the policy realm in regards to this well i mean i don't know public? what you i don't know what you, I, don't, I don't know what you're asking like uh do you do i do i think that there are like when you say policy are you using that mm -hmm. to mean like things that we can vote on or do you do you think like or do, are you talking about like uh are you using that as a word for things that we can do because like when people say policy what i think of is mm -hmm. ah well what what would you look for in a in a in a political candidate well, I don't really care about that. Like political candidates say all kinds of things and we have to analyze, it's a totally different conversation what policies, quote unquote, are advocated for by, um, by 
you know, politicians. Um, I don't think like, I don't think any of the like policy prescriptions of any major politician right now come even close to addressing any of the problems. I mean, fuck, like I've done an entire stream recently talking about how Joe Biden doesn't even keep up to his own promises and ha hasn't mm -hmm. even come close. So like, I think that's almost like an irrelevant, uh, question. I don't, I, of course I support, um, positive reforms. Of course, I'm going to support anything. Um, if there is a politician like say AOC or something who comes up and says, oh yeah, we should, um, you know, we should get this funding for this school and, uh, we should take away this funding from this part of the military and we should redirect it to, uh, you know, building up like special ed and stuff. Of course I'm going to do that because there are people currently going through that system who I want to have a better time, obviously. Okay. But I don't, I, I, I don't, support the system at all and i think that we should aim especially in a time like now where i will say that uh i think we live in a particularly fraught political environment right now and i think that like we need to look at how we can address things outside of just like sort of very 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 um mind i don't want to be mean but like mind palace policy questions when people talk about policy a lot of times what they're talking about is like what about what is this proposal that like a politician will write up on a table and uh that may or may not ever happen it probably may not ever be passed there's a, there's a whole bunch of like steps that go to that i don't really care that much about that particular policy uh policy okay. is something that i talk about when i'm talking about joe biden versus donald trump it's not something i talk about when i'm thinking about my philosophical and social and advocacy approach to schools does that make okay. sense yeah um so i i guess like like it, it, it's 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 fine for the purposes of this discussion if there aren't any distinct policies uh, because there's still arguments that I, I want to or I want to work through. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, I think that probably having some some form of like like, you know, some form of policy or maybe like proposal or maybe some form of legislation or regulation or anything in direction is is probably like a good part to like like center a, a political discussion or piece of discourse you, around. For, so that you for don't you, just like, but that's not how I look at yeah. politics. And, and you're, I mean, you're a social Democrat, explain, right? Like, yeah. that's how you identify? And, yeah, I'm not a social Democrat. I don't think yes. that, like, I think that policy is, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's an almost useless term. Uh, people say sure. policy when they want to give credence to their opinion. They say, oh, this okay. is my policy. And it's just their opinion with no actual ties to what it will actually do or how it will be done. I don't but find when that... I say policy, you know what I mean, right? When I say policy, you know that I mean, I mean a law, I mean a policy, I mean a piece of regulation, I mean, I mean something like in the in the code well, of yeah, like a nation yes, or like a structure right you're looking uh -huh. for you're looking for a state solution and i don't i'm not looking at a state solution i don't think okay. are, i don't think that's helpful to my direction like a, a law mm -hmm. or whatever like like what, you, what what sort of what first of all there's no way that mm -hmm. like like i said before the idea that like um that, that like the education system will pass a law that will abolish itself is absurd we know this is absurd like every well that's that that's why we that's what we're at like okay if 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 we want to strive towards abolishment or not and it seems like you are not like really interested in, in striving towards abolishment it's more like oh, no, you're interested in, just, the, in the no, argument no. and the thought process behind it and getting uh, people to understand that right uh, partially but not entirely you, you're partially okay. on the mark and not like i don't believe uh -huh. in your path in like the social democrat path to uh abolishing uh, there's there's a lot of this happens a lot with conversations i have with social i'm not trying to like 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 undermine your anything i'm very much enjoying mm -hmm. this conversation but something that happens a lot is that there's this attempt of like there's a use of terms like you know like we like we will do this and what they mean is the state will do this and the reality to I me i mean that's what this is they just supposed to be right it's supposed to no, be like an no, expression see, of... see, that's where this is where the disconnect is it's not mm -hmm. just about no like i am opposed i think states are are very very troublesome in like structures i think that states have okay. deep problems so when we're talking about things like when you're saying like oh well you're not at you're not pushing for a politician to try and pass a legislature to abolish the state obviously that's never going to happen that's not even mm -hmm. in the realm of reality we're talking about different political theories here and mm -hmm. what i'm saying is that i think there are ways to accomplish abolishment that don't have anything to do with policy so um, an example of this, um, uh, I've talked about how I think that uh, this is a mic this is like a micro example of this. So I think food stamps are a really, really, really flawed system. OK, and I don't think that there's first of all, there, I don't think there's any way that we would or should necessarily abolish 
food stamps. Um, however, what we can acknowledge is that food stamps in many cases, and again, this is an example, this isn't meant to map perfectly, but food stamps is an example of something where a lot of people are failed by the food stamp system. There are hungry people who cannot, for one reason or another, get food stamps. They're hungry now. Mm -hmm. We need to figure out how to stop them and their children and their family members from struggling in this. And if we were mm -hmm. saying, well, this food stamp system is clogged up and it doesn't seem to do anything, then what you do, my political approach to that is not to forever throw millions of dollars into electoral campaigns necessarily that may or may not have any success, but instead to say, okay, let's take this money, let's take this political effort, let's take this political power and let's build something that is that will- And what I'm asking is, is what, what is that something in the realm of, of this discussion? Oh, okay. so. Wait. So wait, wait, wait a second. So, 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 what is this something with regard to schooling? Yeah. Okay. Well, so, what are you trying to like accomplish? Like something. What am I something trying to like accomplish? I am material then, or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. My my goal mm -hmm. is to primarily, and this is this is why this is where we're gonna see that this comes back to and, and connects to what you were saying just a few seconds ago. My mm -hmm. goal is to change the way that people look at learning and education because I think okay. that is literally, that is the the vital thing that is preventing us from moving to a to any sort of better system. Because people, mm -hmm. us, because the, the general populace associates learning and schooling as the exact same thing that that going to school is the only way that you really learn and and that's not entirely true but as far as what people will say publicly and what people will engage in they more or less think that they're the same thing and okay. even though there's lots of people who think who recognize that we learn things all throughout our life every single day of our lives and increasingly people can't go afford to go to college and yet they still manage to learn college level skills um on their own um i want us to push for uh, for learn types of learning, for an approach to learning, for an approach to education that doesn't mm -hmm. that doesn't involve uh, tying our our learning and our education directly mm -hmm. to our economy or to a state. And I okay, excuse me. I think the first step of that is that people have to actually start to learn what is going on. They have to understand mm -hmm. what systems exist, and they have to understand what systems could exist. They have to understand what are these, what is this school sitting on that is that is valuable to us and that has been built around it and what is not. And that I think mm -hmm. is like the the first step. Beyond that, um, there's a lot of things that I would say that I would advocate for. I mean, mm -hmm. oh my God, like I can think of a, a whole bunch of things. For example, um, just off the top of my head, you can even do these sorts of things. This would require, of course, a change in the philosophy, but you can even do this before even getting to the, the like abolishing the state. You can even change the focus of education from schools to free form learning. So for example, mm -hmm. let's say that uh, that these schooling systems, uh, you know, we're, we're gonna try and we're gonna, we, we can't really get rid of the schooling system because there's too much political um, upheaval. Well, what happens if we get a lot of people to either independently or in cooperation with politicians, buff the hell out of libraries, okay? They stock them up with cool tech. They make sure they have like all kinds of space for people to do stuff. You maybe even hire and train or have volunteers. Doesn't even matter. You, there's a hundred different ways you can do this. Tutors, people who can just be there all day, every day, or from set hours every day. There's a million different individual, you know, nitty gritty that you can do here and there to tweak it. And that children mm -hmm. or adults anybody in the society can come to that place and get access to free learning, free guidance that is not tied to any sort of standardized testing that is there for the purpose of learning and making them stronger. And if mm -hmm. there are, there could even be tests and, and other tools that we identify um, as being effective. I don't know really if tests, but I'm just using tests as an example. Those could be a part mm -hmm. of it, but it would be a fundamentally mm -hmm. different structure because this is something voluntary that people can mm -hmm. seek out and they can seek the information that's important to them on the minute. And the reality is I think people are actually pretty good at identifying what knowledge like they need to learn. Um, if you're facing issues in your life, people sort of naturally pursue answers to those things. The problem that they often have is that they can't find the answers or they don't know where to find the answers. If you make it mm -hmm. easy to find those answers and you make it easy for them to access those answers themselves, you will have people, you will start to see people have a totally different mm -hmm. approach to learning where learning mm -hmm. isn't something that's done to you, but rather something that you do. You take it for yourself. You go and you find all of these books that are interesting. You find these videos, these movies, these art pieces these 
tutors, whatever, all these people can teach you the things that you need to do for what your goal is in life, for what you're trying mm -hmm. to accomplish and what the problems are in your life. So I think that that is like uh, sort of a, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, someone in chat brings up auto auto autodidactic information acquisition. I know a lot of autodidacts. I know a lot of people who are self-taught. Like I'm self-taught mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Like I didn't finish college um, and like, so much yeah like my partner is like a completely self-taught artist so there's a lot of things that you can that people actually do just prefer sometimes to to i mean they often prefer to self-teach when they can but the problem is access so what i believe is that instead of having an approach where we uh where we have a regimented school that pushes this learning onto people that we should try to find ways to make it accessible to people we should mm -hmm. like like the public library is 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 such an unbelievable an unbelievably valuable thing and like and our libraries are completely neglected even in comparison mm -hmm. to our education system but do you see yeah. how this requires a fundamental change in our approach towards what education and learning is and the reason why mm -hmm. we don't see this i think uh, we don't see government take action on this is because the government is satisfied with more or less with some maybe mm -hmm. tweaks here and there with the state of education they're satisfied with the fact that it's fulfilling the economy economic needs so I think mm -hmm. the first material change we need to have is that people need to realize that first of all, schooling and learning aren't the same thing. And secondly, that we can, we, that we should push towards things that, that negate the need to force schooling onto people, that to force certain types of learning and certain types of behaving onto people mm -hmm. and instead encourage them to learn on their own, to engage, to chase the things that they're interested in, to passionately learn, to love learning. And I think mm -hmm. that would make like off the, t like, I think that there's an abundance of evidence that shows that that people actually are happier and more intelligent and more capable of dealing with the problems in their life if that's the approach that they have, if that's the approach that they're given, if they're able to pursue information at their own um, at their own uh, determination. Leisure. Yep, yeah, I got not, you. Not, okay. not even, yeah, not, yeah, leisure or or pressing yeah. need. I mean, there's no there's no like getting rid of entirely that like. Uh, the fact that there's going to be things. There's going to be course of pressures on individuals. Of course, so, yeah. yeah. Like, I understand. you okay. can't, um, yeah, there's a disaster. So okay. Anyway. Um, yeah. So I, I need to say, I have, I have a few things I need to say now. Sure, I, sure. I want to say Please. this. Um, do you think we could we could try to keep in mind uh, like differences in, in speaking time? Because right now this feels like more like an interview, I guess, in terms of the the amount of, of, of time spoken. I feel like if we try to balance out a bit, we get a, a bit more of like a, a back and forth, more productive, where we, we get places sure. discussion, I guess. Sure. So. Yeah. Um, that'd be great. Okay. I, I'm so, just, I'm just sort of talking freely. I, I didn't really know we were going to. Yeah. 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 Um, so what I, what I heard from that is that, um, number one, there doesn't seem to be any clear, like direct policy that is, that is exclusive and that is oriented specifically around this whole, like, uh, mandatory schooling isn't something that is good and beneficial. Ta, 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 ta. Now, I personally like policies when we have discussions is because even if that movement does succeed excellently, and we have a lot of people thinking about this thing in a different way, and mm -hmm. we have this, you know, this discourse going on. Um, sure, we get that out there. And now what? It kind of fizzles up because you don't have anything to kind of like, like bind around. You don't have any goal to work towards. And we have seen this happen a multitude of times. So for instance, over just like a very recent example is the attitudes around like BLM and, you know, um, police brutality and stuff like that over the summer, how we had periods of time in which there was so much, you know, public support and people thinking about, you know, police issues in these ways. But because we lack like these super like clear issues, we didn't really get much done. And that's kind of my issue when we see with have with like having just, okay, the goal is just to have discourse. Uh, but as long as you don't have any like clear policies that you know are, are clear and are well defined to work towards, nothing really ends up happening. That's why I personally like policies. Mm -hmm. Now I did hear that material suggestions I did hear, like buff libraries, for instance. Mm -hmm. Um, those policies are things that any social democrat could also like easily support. Like I could support it very simply. Like I'm an example you of could. a social democrat. Sure. Um, and sure. I think that that's probably sounds like a reasonable policy. So the, 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 it's kind of like like policies or material oriented things that were discussed. They aren't things that are exclusive to the mandatory schooling isn't a good thing type of discussion. So it's kind of like outside the discussion for um, for like a little bit there. And I guess what there is to do now is that it, it's fine to not have like specific policies about this specifically, like for this discussion, there's other things we can talk about. So let's try to get into a bit about the the, the reasoning that we have and these these three uh, four arguments and the violation of child's autonomy, truancy is bad for families, kids don't get much from school and state indoctrination. Sure. Um, so that we can work on those, I guess. Um, yeah. Um, one thing I... I, I 
Can I say that? Just one, one more thing. I'll go um, for it. Sure. Because what you said before, um, talking about things like um, like you know we need to make like knowledge like easily accessible, and that could be like the big thing that like you know relieves people of a lot of the the societal burdens that makes education like better to attain. I would say that we already have this to a pretty large extent, right? We have the internet. You gave plenty of examples of self-educated people. You, um, you know, the people around you, I would say me to some extent, we're, we're able to find a plethora of really cool and really interesting information that we can teach ourselves and apply. Um, but the issue is that there is something that needs to come before that. There's a prerequisite to that. And that is learning to learn or learning to enjoy learning and building up that process and that's one of the key reasons why i personally believe that like having some form of mandatory schooling process or some form of like skeleton by which we can you know promote people's will to want to learn and just like basic informational skills and a wide range of different subjects so they could see what interests them and stuff like that mm -hmm. um that's why i think that's really important and really valuable sure. um yeah mm -hmm. so do, do you want to move on to the 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 first thing here the child's autonomy thing uh well let me just respond to what you said there real quick and then we'll go to that okay. um so the first thing is like you're 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 you, you sort of touched on the on the policy thing again uh i'm not a politician i'm i'm not i'm an advocate i'm an at best an advocate i'm a political edutainer on the internet um me yeah, but you can still push for policies right well what's that but you can still push for policies right well, i'd rather I'm not, like, that's a, a waste of my either. time that's a huge waste of my time that's a waste of my time you and energy so? yes absolutely i think that a lot okay. of time online in pol political spaces is spent like sort of um like emptily signaling waving around a piece of paper that says this is my this is my big smart idea and it's not actually i'm not actually doing anything i'm not actually giving anybody anything to do uh if a well, if ideally a you'd be doing both right you'd be doing the discourse part and the policy part well, right I obviously I, people I, that I, just well, say that, oh here this policy is good and then just leave it there that's not good either but well, i what, would also say that just doing the discourse part and not the policy part is also not but great either. i don't i don't i don't agree with you because i don't think that po like this idea again policy like what do we even mean when we're talking about policy? Are you talking, mm -hmm. when you say policy, are you talking about just general prescriptions? Because if so, I have a ton of general prescriptions of things that I think other people should do, that I think I, I mean, should do. But mm -hmm. you, what you're I asking- I mean laws and regulations. Yes. You're and that, that's asking. the reason, and, and, and so that's why is, it's important because, but, and, but, and here's why I'm oriented around that, okay? And even though, I, I think even if you like are an anarchist, you should be able to recognize uh, this at least, that sure. um, whether we like it or not, the state is the most, like you know powerful conglomeration of power political mm -hmm. power that exists in our society yes sure. and therefore people who mm. want to you know practice politics and want to see things moving in a direction mm. um once again whether or not they like the device or not they need to learn how to use it and they need to try to work within it um in order to get things done and get as much as possible done okay that's where i struggle uh, why do you... you okay yeah so i disagree with you on that because first of all mm -hmm. i don't think that i i think that there can be a uh, sort of opportunistic examples of somebody using the uh you know uh going through the system and and uh and you know making a change or uh, obviously there's all kinds of reforms that are fine and, and that's great if somebody can do that but i don't think that that i don't think that that is a efficient use of anybody's time um i think that if you find yourself in a unique position where you can influence policy in some way like i don't know maybe maybe you were super passionate about politics you became a politician and now you see okay wait there's huge political issues i'm going to try and use this opportunity that i have um but the reality is that that's not most people the vast you no know, obviously the vast majority of people are not actually a part of the policy process outside of occasional votes so of course it's interesting to be but the votes are very important right ah yes but there's only so much time that you can spend watching the marble machine you can only sp there's every when we, life goes on things happen yes there's an election every four years there's an election at the end of every year talk about the things that are on there figure out where you stand on them cast your votes for it but for the rest of the time there is a fuckload of really important issues that are currently doing that are currently affecting a lot of people's lives that i think we have mm -hmm. to talk about and i don't think policy has anything to do with that um when, okay. when we say when we say policy like again if if you want to talk about prescriptions this is something i do on my channel all day every single day i talk mm -hmm. very very openly about what i think that like is valuable where people opportunities for people to make changes direct and immediate changes in their world that i think have a political that i mean i outline have a political direction 
I just don't think that the only way to practice politics is through assuming the sovereignty of the state and also assuming that the state isn't going to change and you. that's not what I said either, right? It's not exclusively mm. working within the apparatus of the state, yes. but it's recognizing that it has a very unique ability to get stuff done that a lot of other like parallel and grassroots projects just simply do not. So ah, I just have a except... very simple question. But, um, can do you I, think can it's... I resp okay, go can respond to that? Sorry, I just want to respond yep. to what, what you're saying. So... Uh, I did too. So. <laughs> what's that? Yeah, it's fine. Um, uh, so with regard to this, with regard to how the state works, like I, I, uh, I don't know, like, like, I think we have a different view on the state. Like, I don't think that you, that like an individual can use the state. Like, I think there might be opportunistic examples where you might be able to pull something off, but by mm -hmm. and large, the state uses people. It is a firm structure that has existed for a very long time. It's incredibly rigid. You play by its rules, not the other way around. And what that means is that there is a process by which, and we can see this even with people like Bernie, where people who are particularly radical continually have to make changes for what they actually believe in order to uh, ultimately suit the system. And what this, what this means is that all effort that's poured into changing things through the position of the state are very, very expensive and are constantly being taxed by the fact that you're, fight, you're attempting, if it's even possible in certain aspects, to fight against the fundamental structures of the state. And so this is a huge issue among, you know, anarchist ph philosophers as to what, mm -hmm. what methods are, are best to uh, avoid that problem. But I think this is one of the areas where we disagree very largely. Mm -hmm. I think that it, I don't buy the sales pitch uh, of being able to work through the state or being able to play nice with the state. I don't think the state plays nice with most people. I think that it just basically, it plays nice for as long as it has to, and then it breaks out the batons, as we saw with the BLM things that you brought up. And also, that's mm -hmm. another, I was funny, it was surprising, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but I would And do you know what else? That was, that was kind of like happened at a similar time that, you know, the batons started breaking out. You started losing, you know, at the same time, popular support for BLM sort of as a movement just started like dropping off. And that I think is also in large part because of the fact that sure, a lot of people were like, hey, BLM, we have all this going, but what do we have? The best thing you had was defund the police. And that is a number one, um, is it like, it's incredibly vague. Everybody has like 10 different definitions of like what that could possibly mean. Um, the political will for, for that or the political paradigm where that would be appropriate is very, very far away. There's a bunch of stuff in between that should have been, you know, arg argued for and should be done before then. And now what ended up happening, we're back and we kind of, we, okay. we didn't really get as much as we should have gone. So now, I want to say uh, a I few feel things like, before. So. I feel like, well, but you just brought up something that's pretty big. Like, I mean, like, I get it. Like, we have a couple things that are on the table, but like, I I feel like that's a pretty major difference in our viewpoints on things. Like if you mm -hmm. if you're saying that like that the popular support for BLM going down once the protesters got it like wrongfully beaten by the cops, um, not like this, that more like that. Uh, hey, the reason why you know in large part people are more okay with that happening is you know because popular support for it also trailed off and a large part of popular you're support trailed off argument for me right now you're making my argument for me right now those radicals okay well then do we agree no you okay. i don't think so i think you're making my argument but All you're right. not realizing you're making it i don't mean mm -hmm. to be rude but you've just argued those pesky radicals uh lost popular support once the cops mm -hmm. started breaking down on them because people were afraid because the cops broke out the batons to stop them from advocating against a wrong what you're you're considering this almost like like out of its context the reality is that those protests those radical movements those people who are angry were angry about material things they were angry about deaths they were angry about the deaths of their own family members of the the mm -hmm. oppression of their own communities so like the idea that like oh like once the cops start beating them they're gonna people are gonna abandon the cause because they're literally getting beaten or once arrested again I said it was more like the other way around, right? Oh, okay. How in the beginning, because there's a lot of very popular support for it, um, number one, you will see more like, you know, even though, uh, you know, and to some degree it absolutely is like very, you know, like surface level performative gestures of police officers like joining into the protests and joining and doing stuff like that. Whereas, hey, you know, and if there was some violence against like protesters, there was more media and more popular support for people calling them out. However, as the movement kind of like trailed off a bit, you saw that those, you know, less police officers are like joining in 
uh, when there had been violence against protesters, which was obviously like very bad, you had less, you know, people calling it out and getting outraged about it, and the movement kind of trailed off. And that's well, I mean, only, I think, that's the only I think part of the analysis. Do you, do you agree fair. with anything? I, do you disagree? Sorry, with anything I, I just said. I disagree. I disagree, like fundamentally, with your framing of this. Like, I think that that's a very, I think that is a hyper simplistic analysis of BLM, which, like, I spent the better part of a year covering the literal riots. Like, I oh. think that, like, the idea that, like, you can just boil it down to, like, oh yeah, well, after this, like, not, that's six not the months, only reason, and I yeah, never said it was I mean, the only but, reason. But, but you're, I think you're, it's, you're, it's it's an important. I, piece I of think analysis, I think so. you're. Uh, I think you're doing a this is a bit of a like a rhetorical sleight of hand where you can say you were declaring what it was that made blm like fall i'm down. making an argument i don't think it's like uh, i don't really I think, think it's, it's, it's... A, i mean i guess it's i just don't think then if that's if that's where you want to go with it, then i just don't think it's a good argument i think it's a bad argument i think there's like All right, hold sure. on, if you want me to lay out like specifically on blm this is an issue that's made uh, to me we don't have to we can pivot off it we can yeah, go away and, uh, i know trust but, me i have done quite a bit I'm on, sure you on have. blm I'm sure you have. yeah I'm sure you have. All right. um that's fine. okay like now, just... let, let, let's. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to try to even out the speaking part. I'm sorry, I'm being a, okay, a lot okay. more. Okay, okay. Listen, like, hey, hold on. Like... Let me wait, wait, wait. Let me put something. You're on my show right now. If you have a problem uh -huh. with me talking too much when you're asking me a whole bunch of questions about my views, okay. Um, you can keep that. You can bo you can box that up because that actually really annoys me. Um, I understand that like you're you're frustrated about the speaking time or whatever, but you've been mostly uh -huh. asking me questions. So that's the natural progression of when you ask me big deep questions about my views. That's gonna happen. Yeah. So I'd appreciate if you, yeah. you know, box that up. And if you want to talk, just use your use your spine, use your chest and speak up and say you want to say something. OK, cool. All right. Great. Let's do that then. OK, so I completely disagree with a lot of the stuff you said previously when it comes to your characterizing of like the role of an individual. So, for instance, okay. one individual can absolutely make a huge difference in the local political scene if it comes to them, like actually deciding to get engaged and getting involved there, like very, very free people do in the first place. So if you actually do it there and you get involved, you can do a lot on like a personal level. Now, that's one thing. Now, you brought the argument as if I was saying that like an individual having an idea or whatever is gonna bring about like large political mm -hmm. change. Absolutely, that is not the case. So for example, when I talk about pushing for like policies and stuff like that, um, and tar on top of like the discourse thing is that sure, um, you have this discourse and you have a policy to be centered around it. Now, bang, you have a water voter block, you have a popular world for this, that politicians should respond to the demand, they should try to tap into that, and then you could try to get something elected. Um, and that's the other part of it. It's not just like an individual, okay, as long as one individual can't do anything with a policy preference and therefore policy preferences aren't good. No, policy preferences amongst a big group of people can have very strong effects on like, you know, politics as a whole and actually getting stuff passed. Um, so I, I, I reject this, this like um, characterization as like, you know, like electoral politics or this politics in general or policy discussions mainly not having a big significant effect. And I want to ask a simple um, question then. Uh, sure, what do you believe has the, the, the best political impact? Is it uh, number one? Um, in Sweden, we have terrible drug policy. We have really, really bad drug policy, like yeah. and almost like borderline uh, US when it comes to like our legal code and how it functions. Okay. And coupled that with a bunch of other issues we have about crime, it is definitely contributing to that in a really, really large way and in a really, really bad way when it comes to the fact that marijuana, for instance, is illegal. Now, I want to ask you a simple question. What do you think is more productive political advocacy? Is it number one, me sitting here discussing the issues that exist around marijuana laws in, the, in Sweden, for instance, and saying like, hey, we need to push towards legalization. We need to push towards decriminalization. We need mm -hmm. to do this X, Y, and Z thing. And also here are the reasons for it. Here are the ideological backings for it. Here are the arguments for it. Here is the discourse about it. Or is it more useful to be like, hey, um, I think mandatory schooling is bad, but there's not really any policy about it. And it's kind of just like there to create like an overall broad discourse thing. And I don't really know exactly what this is going to be funneled was a, into. And the place that I wanted it to be funneled into is also things that are social democratic as well. So dude, like, dude, you know, do you think that's, a, do you really, do you really think that was a good question? I'm asking. Are you, you are you, you getting, can like, it, like, you okay, to. can I be on Can I ask you an honest question? Are you getting like, are you getting flustered with this conversation? Because it feels I'm like asking starting... you a question. Okay. Well, I wanted to ask you one, okay? Because it, it, it's, right. it's starting to feel a little bit like, I feel like that was a pretty uh, unfair comparison there. That felt a little bit like you're trying to look for something. What's unfair about it? Well, you're saying, you're saying, what would you rather do, this thing or... Or let me talk. You, let me talk about this thing about about advocating for marijuana legalization. Or yeah, a policy would you versus add, a uh, And then you went off on a huge tear about a completely different issue. Like that is not like a clear question. That's like that's like a false it's a, dichotomy. It's policy plus all. discourse versus just discourse. Which oh, one yeah. do you think is more productive? Oh well, interestingly, I mean, I don't think. Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna just restate what I said before. I don't think the word policy here means anything. I think you're just using okay. it as a magic word that you think is gonna like like that. I think 
like okay, but we both like, understand what i mean by policy i know i law. don't no i don't understand which okay yes if you're okay. going to be honest when I say about policy that, i mean law i mean okay. legal code if i mean, you mean regulation. legal code and whatever i think yep. that there are times in which it is valuable to advocate for changes to the legal code and i think there are times mm -hmm. in which there are not i don't think it's a dichotomy the way that you framed it i think your framing was super uh was super gotcha -y, um which is fine i get it but like, I just don't think that's a, I don't think that dichotomy exists. I think that for some things there are, there are times where, absolutely. I mean, I've literally done it on my channel. I do it all the time. There are times when talking about a specific policy can be very useful. For mm -hmm. example, uh, on this very stream back in the last year's election, I talked about how, um, a, a sex ed policy that was on the, on the do docket here in Washington, the state that I live in mm -hmm. was super good. And I advocated for people to go vote for it. Thankfully it passed. That's sick as fuck. Mm -hmm. That's great. I think there are opportunities where advocating for policy is perfectly fine. And I think there are other areas where advocating for policy is not going to work. For example, a great example of this. I don't think that like, uh, like war, like if you're talking about protesting a war that your state is mm -hmm. engaging in, like for example, the Iraq war, I don't think that a conversation about policy would save, would do anything at all. It would be a giant waste of everyone's time and you would be much better off uh, str strategizing protests, strategizing messaging, strategizing, uh, you could call it propaganda if you want to, anti-war propaganda, getting this into people, changing public sentiment is a much better value on affecting the law than ever trying, uh, 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 than affecting a war, than ever affecting, than trying to go through some policy route. Sure, you can say you have an anti And why are you trying to change public perception in the war? Because you want to change the way that people behave like i don't know what... you want to stop the war right uh yeah is which that... means sure. a change in foreign policy no, and thus it does we're not. back at the no it does not because a war how do you change wait, how, wait, how wait, do you wait, end wait, a war wait, without wait, foreign wait, wait, policy hold on a second it doesn't mean a change in foreign policy all current okay. wars have been justified under existing policy like the the laws that we do our policy allows for them to happen it's just whether or not the discretion is used to start the war or not like how does changing our foreign policy doesn't change anything about the iraq war Wait, that was choosing a, to go to war with, or not go legally. to war or to pull out of a war or not pull out of war that, that that's all yes, of those and how, are policies. And how do you do and let me ask you something when you have a president who has the right to 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 uh to send troops when you have a legislation that perhaps uh -huh. is let's say a republican majority that decides to go to war what does a talking about policy do anything those people are already in office they're making the decision right now the only thing that can stop them from that is uh troop protests uh giant giant protests that block up their thing until they see that people will not accept them being in their office but this is, this nothing is, is going to be done until somebody with the promise of doing these anti-war policies gets into political power wrong. or you change the people in political power from pushing those policies because they think it's politically ineffective uh, yes. how else you... do you stop a war like do you have wait, like wait, protests so like storm the pentagon and like like there's down the intercoms and there's... tell them to like pull out or like how else do you stop the war Let me... well i think there's a number of ways you can do this but let's okay. talk about a couple so uh first of all uh let me let's talk about another example a an example of probably the perfect corollary to this which is the civil rights act do you think that the Civil Rights mm -hmm. Act was a gift that was given by the legislation to black people in America? Or do you think it was a hard won demand by literally an unprecedented uprising of people who did not vote? This was not a vote. They went and demanded but it in Washington. Pushed for a policy, right? They ah, pushed for the civil second, rights bill. But you're talking about a different thing. There was no policy. Hold that on. Was put, there was no policy that was pushed for. I think you're conflating my support for policy with an exclusive support for just voting and saying that policy, politics like starts and ends at voting. Those are I don't believe both enveloped here. I don't believe that the fact that pro politicians hands were forced into signing a law is an example of a success of the state. That is an example of people. I'm not talking about it being a success of a but state. You, I'm but saying you, but it's wait, a but you are, but you are because you're saying. No, no, no. You, wait, hold it's on. Let me explain myself. You it's are a success saying, of the people successfully utilizing the state towards their ends. They didn't utilize the state. They held the state hostage. Do you understand that? They, like, they, they didn't they, utilize the state. Laws they, were wait, passed. Wait, wait, wait. You, you need Rose to Rose, utilize Rose, the state to you, you're I, not you're okay. not even you, you're just you're not understanding history here if you go okay. the march on washington was an unprecedented sea of of human beings that showed up mm -hmm. and said 
We do not care how you do it. We don't care if we have to walk in there and stay here until the day that you make it a law. We don't care if we have to keep getting it more intensified. And of course, you had even more extreme people who were saying other things at that time and doing other things at that time. But the March on Washington was a demand and the state caved to the demand. It wasn't using policy for no, ICE no. Civil Rights Act. Wrong for an outcome. Okay. They wrote a policy to satiate the demand mm -hmm. the demand was for liberation and they wrote a policy that satisfied at least most of those demands enough that people were willing to calm down and go home so no there okay. wasn't there was yeah. no march with this the here's the law we want you to pass they walked in with the demand for liberation they walked in for a demand for better things and the policy came as a concession they because... wanted things to be done right they wanted yes. an end to second class citizen they wanted Correct. an end to jim crow thank you and and the way that is manifested is in a policy you no. can't do those things without a policy no. Incorrect. wait yes or no can no, you do no. those things without a policy can Absolutely. you end jim crow you policy. can do those things without a policy. Okay. I don't know, know how, how you can end a legal, like a legal clause or a bill without using a counter bill or a legal policy okay. or the same institution that put those there in the first place. I don't I, know how that does. I, Maybe you guys are different in the US, but. No, I under, I recognize why you call yourself a data male now because okay. you literally can't see outside of the system the, 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 the system itself the, the the demand was we are going to be liberated we have shown up in great numbers we refuse mm -hmm. to be second class citizens you either make yep. room for that's us a policy that's a policy no. wrong yes wait that is a wait. policy that that is an a that is a policy that the state has yep. forced on other people Something can be a policy and a and, like a political goal at the same time. And you are, and now you are showing me why the word policy doesn't mean anything. All you're talking about is people re resisting against an unjust law of secondhand citizenship that was put on them, a law they didn't write, a law that mm -hmm. they, despite living in a democratic system, did not have any choice in putting over them. They resisted that law. They broke the law. They showed up in person. They trespassed. They got arrested. They got beaten by the state that was upholding that policy. And they said, this policy, we are resisting it until you give up. It was a point. It's until a you give us a new policy. No. Well, perhaps. Perhaps the that's enough. Wait, wait, wait. But perhaps that's enough. Sometimes a new policy can be uh, a new policy, a, in the case of the Civil Rights Act, a very, a very hastily, they found a way to the, make the Civil Rights Act happen, didn't they? Okay. The Civil Rights Act and the, the, the Civil Rights Movement advocating in a similar way to which you're advocating for the ending of mandatory schooling have been, wouldn't have been end Jim Crow and second class citizens. We want equal rights. It would have been like racism is bad and not desirable um, and it's not something we want but I, we don't I, I know just, exactly how we're going to accomplish it that, sure. that, that would be the, the analogous example yeah, i mean there. i disagree with I you think, but sure if okay, you feel like perfect. that if that makes you feel like more comfortable in your position then that's fine like okay. I, I just i just don't agree with that sort of comparison like i i don't think all so. right that's fine yeah like i i i think that uh i think that the demand to undo to to fight against first of all like the civil rights act we all know that it didn't go far enough we all know it didn't go even close to far enough but it was enough yep. to get it was enough to for that people believe that hey damn okay we've been we've been listened to here all right cool let's go you know this is good enough but there were a lot of people in those groups who and many of them still exist now who still kept advocating afterwards because that policy wasn't enough the demand and this, was not this, met now, by the this policy. discussion now doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the conflict with it's just adding more information about i don't think that yeah, the, the, sure. this extra thing okay I mean, maybe maybe i just think it's i think it's important <laughs> to recognize that that the way that you're framing it as though like the policy is the thing that stands between uh between the outcome no no the outcome is what people fight for the people outcome fight. is the policy no it isn't see that's where we're different that's where okay, we're well, different completely. The, the outcome the outcome is what you want to accomplish through policy is that better no no that's not true like see this okay. is where we, we dif differ like for All example right. let okay. me just let me just make a really simple like hypothetical here let's say that All you're right. the state and i'm uh, a, a a a radical insurrectionary okay and you say i'm not giving are we you talking january 6th or are we talking malcolm x time <laughs> oh we're exact oh i don't know you decide i mean I've, we'll, we'll right. see we'll see which way you want to go okay so i'm All a radical right. insurrectionary you behind you have a cabinet of my hrt and i want my hrt okay 
And I say, okay. listen, trans people should not have the state standing between them and their HRT. I want my mm -hmm. fucking HRT. And you say no. And you send your cops out to beat me up. But I beat up your cops. And then I okay. come over and I say, all right, I want my HRT. And you go, oh, 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 okay, okay. Uh, here, I'll give you one bottle. How's that? And I say, mm, nope, not good enough. And then you send more cops and I beat those cops up. And then I say, mm -hmm. okay, so you're going to give me the HRT? And finally you go, fine, fine, we'll give you the HRT. That is a concession, yep. you understand. That is not, sure. that is not the goal. Sure, a policy can be a concession. Not, but no, I didn't go there with the goal of, of, of writing You got there with the goal of attaining the HRT. I got, the, I got there with the goal of stopping you from standing in the way of what is rightfully mine. Of getting the HRT, right? Yes. That, is, that, that is is the goal. Okay, See perfect. where you, that is not a policy. And, that is not a policy, and that's a goal. Up. Hold on. And the solution to it ended it up that it wasn't just like you guys fought until the person in between you and the HRT fucking died and there was nobody there. You could just, oh, I guess I'll just take well, it now. I mean, sometimes that does happen, though. You acknowledge sometimes that it does, does happen. happen. In that case, it's not policy. In that case, it's like a, it's just like a revolution. Oh, and in that case, it's not policy. However, you at the end of the day, that person in between you and the HRT was still there. But you guys crafted a policy to, sure. you know, you got what you wanted through it. Yeah, and that, sure. that's, that's so okay. again, we go back to the point where I was at like 10 <laughs> minutes ago before you contested to my argument about policy, which is that in okay. this particular context, the, the, the topic of policy doesn't mean anything. It's just a, it's just a term you want to be able to say, oh, well, like, it feels like what you're trying I want to be able to say we want to do something with this. Yeah, but I already, this wait, is wait, a material wait, wait, thing wait. we want to accomplish but, but with you, it. But, but I've done that for you. You just don't okay. oh, like it. Do you want the abolition of mandatory schooling? I would love the abolition of mandatory schooling. Okay, be perfect. Then let's go and have that argument. Okay, cool. Um, so your four main arguments that I've identified for sure. why you want to get rid of mandatory uh, schooling is number one, it's a violation of the child's autonomy. Yeah. Number two, truancy laws are bad for families. Number three, kids don't get much from school. And number four, state indoctrination. Mm -hmm. um, let's go through these in order because we've touched on one of them quite a bit. So let's try mm -hmm. to you know make it a bit fresh. Um, the violation of the child's autonomy. So the way I view this is that yes. it is absolutely 100% okay, and we do this all the time, to limit a child's autonomy when it comes to a wide range of questions in which we generally societally believe that the outcomes for them are superior if we make the decisions for them. Education, fucking excellent example of this, okay? okay. Things like, for example, the fact that kids will, if they had a free choice, probably not go to school they'll probably sit home playing fortnite or doing oh, something that else says something like. more about school than it does about fortnite or about society or it says the fact that it is probably very very difficult to get an educational curriculum up to par with a piece of software that is literally designed to give you pure enjoyment yeah, and nothing I mean, what, isn't that maybe a that's problem? What isn't says. that more of a problem between those two things like maybe do you believe it is ever possible for school to get up to the point of a piece of software that is literally designed exclusively for the purpose to get you to have fun and stay with like doing the actual thing yes do you absolutely believe that's... of course i do and the reason and i know this is funny because we're now it's weird i expected that we were going to have a, a much more like like productive and interesting conversation, but you're you're going back to basically the Hans memes, which is this Fortnite thing. No one here is arguing that that like uh, children should be. I mean, first of all, I talk about like one of the things I talk about on my media Wednesday and Sunday streams is how fucking manipulative and and bad a lot of these games are. I think some of them are very dangerous because they literally build in gambling things. But that's not what we're talking about here. There's like I don't even like if. I'm an adult. I can do whatever the fuck I want whenever the fuck I want. And I'm a super anarchist. I don't play video games all the time. I could if I wanted to, but I don't. There's a sure, reason but you're why. not a kid. But That's the I thing. Mean, kids kids don't have the ability to evaluate and make the rational decisions you're making right now. You realize that, hey, what is second. best for me is not to sit on my ass and play video games all day. I have to do X, Y, and Z productive thing in order to be able to have a standard of living you know or to funny? be able to do other thing I want in the future. Well, kids don't have that skill. You want to know what's funny? When I was a kid, I didn't play video games all the time either. I would go outside and play. I would build things sure. in my backyard. In that fact, is, in fact that some may of, be you. Excuse me. Hold on. In fact, some of my greatest memories of childhood were not about video gaming, but rather the things that I sought and did, the projects that I did. I used to make all kinds of projects. In fact, everybody I know talks about when they were younger that they used to work on their hobbies and their and the fun shit that they used to like to do with their friends. As it turns out, it's like this idea right. that kids are just stupid idiot, like drooling idiots who just want to mm -hmm. play Fortnite all the time. I find that an offensive thing. Like it, it, I think it, this is a perfect example. It reveals your, it reveals your excuse me, I'm not, I wasn't, I wasn't finished. Um, it, it reveals the position of the, like, I don't know, maybe I should say the sock dem faction now because you're towing that mm -hmm. line. Like it reveals the position of the sock dem line, which is basically that children 
our property that um I that you should be able to decide everything with. And I don't think that's true. I, I never think... said everything. Come on. Yeah, but, okay. But, but, okay, let's but be wait a minute. Hold on. So wait a second. You can get offended that by you, that, you... but you made an example between choosing between school and Fortnite. You think that's just any more of a faith of a of a good faith example than what I just gave and to you? And you you kind of I don't know if you meant to do this, but you kind of like conceded to that in just the example oh, that you gave sure. previously. Okay. So the example you, you gave is that okay. hey, the key things that you remember is wow, this is an excellent time I'm having was you doing like personal projects or like hanging out with friends or going and building yeah. like sandcastles or whatever. Perfect. So yeah. I ask you then, if kids are capable of having such experiences, why would they ever go to school Good instead question. of just sitting home and like sitting in the sand pit all day they and wouldn't. like building shit in the sand they pit? They wouldn't because schools Perfect. suck. No, they wouldn't because okay. schools are bad because schools. Listen, let me just quote. I'm going to quote something right now. I just want you to will I, never get school listen, to be at the same listen, level of entertainment you, as something you, that is it's not about entertainment. It's not about entertainment. Let me just read you. I'm going to just pr break out a little bit of Lewis Althusser here. A ch the, the modern school is a place where everything is being used to break the will of the child and then to pound need and shape the child into a being utterly foreign to itself. This is what schools are. If you're, if you sit here and you guys tell on yourself, what schools are today has wait, nothing wait, to do with the you, argument you, I just made. Do you, you understand? Tell, you tell on yourselves when you say kids hate school so much that they would do that they would sit in a sand pit all day. Maybe you should make school more fun. Maybe you should make school more entertaining. There are fuckloads of kids who have fun at school in the current paradigm, and that's with it being imperfect. There are kids who do that. There are definitely ways to do that. And if a kid is is finding himself. Uh, wanting to sit in the sand pit all day, maybe it's the teachers and the adults. Uh, it you know even in your own model where kids are just drooling idiots who only want to play Fortnite. Um, we, even in that particular model, uh, maybe the teachers should be go going. What what are we doing that's not engaging this kid? How are we? How come we're not communicating to them that this stuff is important? You know that you can communicate that something's important to a child without forcing them to do something right like it happens yes, literally daily children are literally naturally inclined to listen to their parents this is like a scientific fact children listen to their, to their parental figures i have parents on the list later and we're going to get to parents but sure. what i'm saying here is that it's, it's not that okay i understand obviously why kids today prefer to play fortnite than to go to school and obviously this speaks to the quality of education today but here's the thing okay the quality of education today has nothing to do with this argument. Yes. The argument fundamentally mm -hmm. stems about whether or not it is even conceptually possible to make something that is that is basically built to give people information and knowledge about things that they may not necessarily have a passion for in a way that is as entertaining or equally rewarding towards the like the the brain of a child yes. as something that is explicitly designed with that as its sole purpose and intent. And the good news is this is where I would tell you and basically every single Soctem who has this opinion on kids to please take mm -hmm. one minute and listen to any any even liberal educator because they will tell you, yes, it's absolutely important. In fact, there's a, one of the best examples are- Is my, it possible? Do you think it's oh, possible? It's absolutely possible. Of course okay. it's possible. Not even possible. It's already being done. You know what? You want to okay. know? You want to know? Here's an interesting story. This is an anecdote, but I'm not the only one. There's an entire massively successful and also, I think, relatively respectable as far as uh, firms go, as far as capitalist firms go, a company called The Learning Company. They make things like Jumpstart Third Grade. They make things like Math Blaster. When I was a kid, I was given those games and I played them and I looped. I literally got placed in Gifted and Talented for both reading and math at that time because of what I did at home. Because I would go home and I would play these games and learn at the same time. We recognize that this is already possible. And in fact, that in a lot of cases, these softwares have been brought into schools, which is kind of silly because they make you go to the school building that you don't like and then you do the thing that you would have done at home anyway. Um, but you go and then they, they use these. These are used. There's con giant million dollar government contracts that buy the games that are fun and that kids actually love playing and learning. And then instead of, instead of experiencing the a place where everything is used to break the will of a child and bound and pound and need them into some something that they don't even recognize like a like a like a factory worker or whatever instead you have children who learn that le learning is fun if you teach a kid with a game first then they go wow learning is fun this might have been hard but look at the rewards i got from it look at the things that i gained from this it's actually very easy and i have a bit of a unique perspective I don't know what child would rather play a math game than play fortnite well that's, that's then what is it, wait 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 but but no one is saying 
that you never, you know, pr like that you never provide different things for your kids. You can just not buy your kid Fortnite. You can just not buy your kid Fortnite. You can just okay. Like what? What? What is hard? Like, see, this is why I, I get so. Care, but this okay. is why I get frustrated okay. with this silly example because it feels like uh -huh. what it feels like. It feels like like, and I hate to say I, I'm going to lump you in with. The so do you also like stop them from like like going out to the sand pit and to the playground? Oh, I don't know. Maybe, or maybe you with say, other kids "Hey, or... no, kid, we got to do this today." And then they go, "Oh, mom, please." And then you go, "Listen, it's important." And they go, "Okay." There you go. Hey, you have to do this for six hours every day because it is important that kids learn the, yeah, except, these things that they have see, to learn. It typically the, but, takes but, this amount of time. But now we're going back to the thing, which you've already admitted that the six hours, eight hours that they have to sit in there is fucking stupid and doesn't work anyway. It's really bad. So you've admitted this multiple times. In fact, you started wait, this conversation. Wait, 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 when stop, have stop, I ever stop, said stop. that going to school for six hours a day is like, doesn't work? You started this w out by listing that? off. Uh -huh. You started this off by listing off that you basically agree with all of my problems, some of which I believe are intrinsic to the way that we I said I agree with the ones I listed on. The purpose of listing That's... them out was to see if that if you had anything that beyond that, that I hadn't brought up, you could add them to the list. And I don't remember did... six hours a day of education oh, being well, on there. Okay, so maybe, point. maybe, well, here's the thing. First of all, six hours a day is a lot for a kid. I don't know if you've ever like hung out with a kid, but kids don't kids have a hard time sitting for that long. So maybe maybe of this course, eight, I'm not saying I'm not saying you're sitting in like okay, a little but, wooden chair like this for six hours. Well, that's Obviously what they do. Not, right? But that's what they do. That's what they I do everywhere, but a, all over the world, okay. in every single you capitalist have, education system. You can have I understand that, but you yes. can have a six hour like school day. That is, you were sitting in a wooden chair for six hours, fucking no breaks, 15 minutes, sure. go and like force something down your throat yeah. to eat lunch and then go back and sit in the chair. Or you can have six hours of like varied education, intermittent, like go out to do like some form of physical activity or like playing decent breaks enough for you to recalibrate your brain and thought about what you learned previously. So you're not learning back to back to back to back okay. opportunities okay. for you to socialize that's with your fellow you. kids that's so that you soul. build social bonds. Of so cool. you see, but that's a cool sales you're, you're... pitch. That's a really cool sales pitch. I can do one too. Okay, what if, what if in a, I, let's, you can have a system whereby kids play some educational games in the morning and then the rest of their day is free for them to go learn with their friends, to go social to meet to, to to meet other people to go do other things mm -hmm. you can you can have them make we already know that kids can learn way faster um outside of school that it's actually you know quite inefficient except for except for in producing workers because sure. do, do you know why that is do you know why that is that is because the things that kids learn outside of school are the things that they are super interested in wanting to no, learn. No, that's However, not true, the things though. that they need to learn no, but, but they may wait, not wait, have wait, a strong wait, wait, interest for to be able to pursue it personally <laughs> are things that are taught in school and therefore but they're more difficult you're, to learn. You're running into like, we're, we're skipping over so many things and it's getting very frustrating to me because it feels like, it feels like to me at this point that you are, you have a, lo a political line that you're, that you've drawn and that it is that basically you're not actually open to hearing the, the meaningful critiques of this. Listen, like, here's what I'm trying to say about this. So when you're talking about, when you're talking about, about, about schooling, when you're talking about sending kids in there and the things they have to learn, First of all, somebody determines what they have to learn. I don't think that a lot of the things that children are forced to learn in our current system, a lot of it is is not very useful to them. It's not useful and it's not interesting. And a lot of it is just downright false. You want a great example of this? Again, offhand, Texas. Texas allows within the law, within their policy. Sure. Now, once again, we're back to the quality of existing no, education. No, we're not. not. No, we're not. No, we're not. We're not discussion. talking about the quality of education. We're talking about examples of the fact that somebody of has to set. Education. No, we're not. We're talking about examples of. Okay, what are we going to say about Texas? Let me explain myself. We're talking about the fact that somebody has to decide what children have to learn. And it's not anybody mm -hmm. who actually knows those children, actually. It's determined by a distant federal, perhaps state. What were you about to say about Texas? Oh, in Texas, that they, they allow for, uh, you know, Christian education in their public schools. Perfect. Um, that is, that is in my mind, poor quality education. Okay, and I you literally ignored thing. everything else that I was saying, because that's like... Uh, well, it, because for some reason, like, you on, lied about is... what you were about to say, right? No, I didn't I lie. Know. Wait, wait, I didn't lie about... No, what, what are you fucking talking about? Like, oh God, because... this conversation is becoming so stupid. It's like, it's like- Because oh you're gonna God. bring up an example of, of a poor quality education, religious education. I was like, hey, we kind of said before, right? Did you, that the did you listen to, wait, okay, okay. Are you, are existing... you, wait, wait, stop, stop, stop. Listen, are you, are you dead set on the fact that like, 
uh, that I was lying to. I can to. repeat to you what you do, said. Do you want to well, watch the, the Do you want to watch the VOD back? Because what I was talking about was I said I opened that particular segment as an example mm -hmm. of saying somebody has to decide what's appropriate. I then gave an example of this. An example mm -hmm. which I think is bad, which is meant to be illustrative. I was not talking about the fact that bad things can exist. I'm talking about the fact that I'm giving an example of somebody decides what children have to learn. Somebody does that, absolutely. right? And we need to do that. That um, is absolutely necessary. I have a question. There's a sentiment we? in chat here. Who is here. we? Who is we? Don't talk the, to chat. Don't talk to chat. No, I, this is this is a question I was going to ask anyone. It just popped up here. Um, dear Mama, do you believe that children should not need to learn anything that they're not interested in? Or do you believe that, that there is a no. core of things oh, that... Not, uh, no, I think that's silly. I think that children okay. have... I think that there's all kinds of things that children aren't immediately interested in that... Uh -huh. um, that, that we that, need to teach them, right? Sure, of course. Like, for example, that fires burn them. But guess what? Okay. Guess what? Those determinations okay. uh, are not universal. Nobody... Not everyone agrees on exactly what those things are. We don't even have a semblance of agreement. What we have right now is a state that has decided what they think is important, which in this case is the basic ar arithmetic, civic history, which is incredibly biased, and a bunch of other things that per make that person into an efficient and, in the words of the literal founder of the American public school movement, uh, socially efficient. You know what I mean? Making people into socially e efficient, civic-minded individuals. I okay. and many other people don't think that's necessarily important. Now, maybe you do. Maybe you think that's super important. That's a different conversation. But, but what let's I'm go to that, is, then, because this is this is going to be brought up like over and over. So, what what do you mean by this? These like civic values that you have like an issue yeah. with being taught in schools. What well, are these? All kinds these of, are. Yeah, there's all kinds of like civic values that mm -hmm. are um that are taught in school. For example, um that like uh, one of the civic values that's very commonly taught in uh, American schools is uh the idea of like like a Puritan work ethic. Now, they don't call it that, but what they'll say is you always work hard, you always stay mm -hmm. late, you always come early, you always show up on time, you obey your bosses, you obey your teachers, and if there's a problem, you take it through this particular line. Children are taught to behave a certain way. In American schools, we even have to do a Pledge of Allegiance as a part of our mandatory schooling in many cases, which I think is very creepy and disturbing, and I think most people around the world kind of acknowledge that. But there's all kinds mm -hmm. of other things, too, like you're taught certain political opinions. Like, for example, uh, we're taught very, very specific spe uh, uh, interpretations of the past that, oh, America was founded on these values, whether or not that's actually true or not, that America, that a good American does these things. There's like so many examples of these so-called civic values of what you're supposed to be as a good person. It's a moral education. We just don't call it that, but it is, it is a moral education. Okay. okay. So I picked out a few things that you mentioned here. Um, so, um, I can immediately just strike off things like pledge and allegiance and political opinions, because we know that these are not intrinsic to any school system. We have plenty of countries and most countries in Europe in the developed world. We don't have people doing the pledge of allegiance. We don't have being, people being taught as like crazy of like a history that you guys may be taught, especially in certain schools about, you know, your, you know, country's history and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now I'm going to talk to a bunch of, about, about some of the other things that you said. So things like respect your teachers, basically sure. you characterize this as do what your boss says. Yes. I think that a very important part of just any sort of like educational system, like you're looking into the camera, you're ready for me to say some authoritarian shit, aren't you? Um, but I, I think a very coming. important part of this is to learn to be able to like respect people who are put like in a position where they're trying to like help you out, trying to help you accomplish yeah. something. Do you believe that's a bad yeah. value to have? We got that's it. A question. Is we that a it. bad value to have? Oh, you yes. have no idea what oh, I was about to say. Absolutely. My time management, if you thought that was radical. Oh, it's absolutely, there it is, there it is. This is what it always boils down to. You think okay. that children should be taught respect for authority that's put above you. You literally said it in your own words, you should have respect mm -hmm. for a person, and you, you changed at the end because you caught yourself a little bit, and you said okay. a person who's trying to help you. Well, everyone's trying to help you. Fucking Stalin was trying to help okay, you. Okay, let's say Come authority, fuck, fuck it. Get rid of the help yeah. you want. Let's go with the authority one. Fuck yeah, thank you. Honesty okay. is, is great. Do you, do you understand that? There's a difference between having a respect for authority and having like mindless obedience to an authority. There's no. a difference between having no. okay. No. So because the reason why you don't I... believe that there's a difference between like like having like a like like a respect for you know like a parent or whatever because hey you know they kind of know a bit more than you do about certain types of things they have more life experience they can probably teach you quite a bit they probably know what's best for you in a lot of situations as opposed to hey don't do what my dad says he's gonna like beat my ass I should never question anything he ever says because if I do then I am I mean, like I think there's there's worlds of difference there in between.
I, I don't, I don't like, I think you're just talking about a, a, a about a scale and like creating a false dichotomy. Absolutely. The idea, there's wait, a scale. Wait, on, 100%. Wait, are you, are you going to let me respond to that? Or are you just like, are, do you think you, you got like the, the lock? Cause like, I think this is a huge miss. So the, the first thing is now I, you know, I don't know. I, I grew up in a, in a, in a, in a, in a particularly right-wing house. And I was taught that you always question authority. Now, that was probably one questioning of the only authority things. can be a part of ah, like yes but there's another nothing. aspect which is that i yeah. don't believe that any person has an obligation to obey any authority especially without justification so for example um well, that's I the don't... thing you're supposed to inspire respect through justification ah yes but what you're talking about is mm -hmm. not that you're no no that about... is what i am talking that about that is not what you're talking about and I'll, I'll show you why. That that's is not what right. I mean, then. I can okay, say that. Well, that's that what you mean, what I mean, but you're not doing a good argument for that. And the reason why okay. that's the case is because you've talked about this in the context of a school system where children do not have any if, if, if. They do little, absolutely have a reason wait, 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 to respect wait, wait, wait. their excuse teachers. Me, excuse me, excuse me. I didn't even finish my sentence. I literally okay. wasn't even going to say that. I was going to say that children don't have any choice in who their authorities are. These are authorities that are placed above them, many of whom. I will note, use that position of authority very badly. I, I don't want to go off onto another uh, uh, issue, but child abuse in schools is a huge issue, okay? So this position of authority is presumed and forced on the child, and those teachers do not have to earn anything. I had teachers who were extremely cruel to me, and I, and I think had that to is respect wrong. Yes, but the problem is, is that those, that, that telling children that they have to respect an authority, that they, that that does not have any accountability to them whatsoever is not only does wait that... hold on they don't have any accountability to the no they don't Ch teachers notorious uh, this is the this is the we have the the like the american moment here i guess i don't know um but like typically like in, in schools at least functioning schools and well-managed schools which once again here we send back to the quality thing let's not talk about the quality of school right now but the quality of school as it can be okay you absolutely have an interest in the fact that the kids are you know, finding or fine with the teacher that they aren't receiving a fuck ton of complaints, that they're learning in a productive environment, that their like class performance and stuff shows that they're having a good time in the classroom and the rest of it. That's absolutely like an important part of. I mean, who's none of that. that none of that was. That was all just. That's very nice because none of that okay. actually holds up. If you are you have spoken here that part of the purpose of school is to teach them to respect an authority. I don't think that any child should be taught to respect an authority. I think that a child, that children should be taught to, by the default, question and seek seek critical thinking for authority. What is and, the and relationship wait, wait, you think on, students should on, have with their on, teachers? Hold on, I'm not. I really was not done with what I was trying to say there because I'm trying to explain. There's a number of reasons why I believe this. First of all, I believe that there's that. First of all, I believe that parents can be abusive and should be questioned by children. That children can determine on their own or through their uh, outside of the home experiences that their parent is not treating them well. I think that's something. That oh, can happen. Yeah, yeah. Ah, then additionally, there are other things. For example priests, religious people. I believe that um, one of the things that comes up in this conversation is, well, what do we do with religious enclaves? Religious enclaves are best challenged, not by um, not by putting kids into a system that that tells them to respect authority and then they immediately go home and have their pastor tell them that, uh, you know, Donald Trump is 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 uh, a savior or whatever. Um, and I grew up in a cult, so I went from school telling me to respect authority at all times to home telling me to respect authority at all times. And the only real person in my life who didn't really tell me that was my dad, but he was kind of a hypocrite on that. So, but whatever, that's neither here nor there. The fact of the matter is that kids are being taught to obey authority and it has all kinds of bad outcomes, but it has one outcome for the state that's very beneficial, which is that if somebody, if you're told by the state that somebody's an authority over you, well, you better show respect to them because otherwise you're doing something wrong. But I don't think there's anything wrong. No. Saying, so you should understand why you should have respect for those no, people. No, see, because I, but then, but that requires them actually having a good reason. And the reality is that they don't. Did I ever say that people should have unwavering, like, respect for authorities? Yes, you did. You oh, argued, yo, 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 yes, yo, 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 yo. you did. You argued that children should go to school to learn respect for authority that is placed over them. That doesn't mean that has no yeah, calculation. You should understand why they have respect for people for them and how a respectful interaction with an then authority maybe, is supposed then to maybe be handled. If a lot of kids are going to school and a lot of kids are feeling like their teachers don't treat them well and like those environments don't treat them well and that they have to follow a bell and all of this shit and it's very dehumanizing, maybe those children are completely and utterly by your own argument justified in saying, fuck this. This, this authority has not led up to my standards.
Yeah, 100%. And if those kids then do it and they're like, hey, we want a petition for a school or educational system that doesn't like, like capitalist <laughs> kids, between you're, classes you're and You're asking like that. children that you believe, you believe children will just sit around and play Fortnite all day. And now you're asking them to engage in a democratic process against their own teachers who you've admitted they're going to be taught that they need to respect and be punished for not respecting. This is absurd. It depends on this how is they magic are thinking. to respect, right? This is magical we kinda, thinking. We keep you're stumbling talking. back to this. No, we're not coming And back. I think this is you where the American to... school experience It's not, it really has nothing. Are... Okay, save me the Euro code. Because there okay, please, please, are please save me the Euro code. That you guys are a lot in of these your, your countries, countries are and just as stinky them. and shitty as ours, okay? You are could... so wrong about that. Yeah, you are uh, I mean, here we go. Now we're getting the we can talk nationalism. We're gonna, what about, what's next? You're gonna, you're gonna start, you're gonna start going in talking about Nordic superiority? This is fucking Eurocope right here. Yes, America has fucked up situations. We also have a couple of areas in our, in our country that have really cool, really, really and good Education sure as fuck isn't one of them. Now, to yeah, get sure. back to what was yeah, being said yeah, there, okay? Yeah, you know what so obviously, it is a very important skill. arguments isn't clearly the Nordic, the Nordic specialty either, so. Maybe not according to you, I guess. But um, I think like part of what absolutely should be taught is to be taught number one, like like why people have positions of authority in society, understand that process, and also taught how those interactions are handled. I have a question for you. What do you believe should be like the interaction between teacher and student? Between a teacher and a student, mutual. Do respect. you believe it should be kind of clearly defined that hey, the oh, teacher yeah. kind of knows I think that if there's going to be a teacher and there's going to be a student, mm -hmm. that it should be a, yep. a relationship of mutual respect and mutual growth. And that means but who has who who is the position of authority here? Who is the position of authority? Wait, there yep. isn't there shouldn't be a position of authority. There is no position of authority nope. between a teacher nope. and a student in a classroom. Nope. There shouldn't. There shouldn't be a position of authority. See, you're you're okay. you've got you've got state brain. You've got propaganda brain. brain. You believe that just because a government puts somebody in a position that that makes them the authority. But there's That's nothing about not what I, And I've said this seven million times that person should be an authority by yes, virtue but who of them. But, but, but who determines what's an authority? We the state. should determine that democratically. We. There's that magical Ooh. we. But guess what? The reality is the Democrat, but that the democratic process doesn't work well for this. It I have doesn't. never seen an anarchist so pessimistic about the abilities for democracy to function. Oh, wait. Oh, you should. Oh, man, you should read some more anarchists. Have, how much anarchist theory have you read? Because uh, just so you know, like, I mean, it's funny that you say that because literally mm -hmm. one of the earliest, like, classical anarchists i was just reading a thread about it yesterday classical anarchists were some of the biggest critics of democracy and there was a huge thread about how democracy now is used terminologically different than it was then and all these early um anarchists are super against democracy because they were specifically talking about electoral democracy and that's what they they did it by it's a very recent development this idea that democracy is super super broad and and means specifically when people have a say in politics that's not what it's meant and that's not what it usually means now if you're saying that like oh like people should have a direct like a say in the things around of course if that's what your definition of democracy is but that's not what your definition of democracy is what you're saying is we should vote as a as a country as a as a bordered country as a specific area on what values everybody has to live by but I think that's mm -hmm. fucked. I don't think that you can do that easily. And I Not think necessarily that, everybody well, has to live uh, by, but a but, common core for us to uh, stem yes. from. Well, they have to, to live by, and, you, and one of the things you have to live by is you have to respect the government approach, uh, appointed teacher because that teacher was put in your way, and you have to respect that. That's what you. This is your argument. This is your system that you're advocating for. I don't think. Do you believe that it is? Do you believe that it is unreasonable for a student to like to respect the teacher? Do you believe it's like an, it's an unreasonable thing or it's something that is like logically flawed for for a student to respect the teacher? For a student to have respect for a teacher? Absolutely not. I have a and lot to of treat them as like wait, a, wait, like, like wait, as I have a lot of respect for teachers. in the classroom. No, wait. So those are two different questions. Do I think that it's unreasonable for a student to respect a teacher? No, I would hope that students do respect their teachers, but I do think and that treat it's, them but I do think that it's as an authority. when you when you place a teacher as an authority. Remember, these are children who are being subjected to a learning process. And by the way, I will note that uh, Wait, do you believe that a student modern should educators, treat the teacher as an authority? With you. Modern educators oh. disagree with you. Even do you believe that students should teach to treat teachers as an authority? No. They should not. Okay. No, not all at right, all. Right. Of course not. And guess what? Educate, um, again, once again, I challenge you to go read go read any of the books by even liberal educators. They do not advocate for hierarchicalized uh, student relationships. They want teachers to be on even footing with the, the students so that they see themselves as partners in learning. And kids do not feel that. 
Kids are fucking terrorized by their teachers these days. Sometimes because the teachers can call the cops on them, literally. Now that's a bit of an Americanism. I don't know if you guys have that over there. Yeah, the people bring up Montessori schools and whatever. That's a great example. Montessori schools are, are a non-hierarchical situation. The teacher is framed not as an authority, but as a guide, an experienced person who can help you learn things, but doesn't have the final say. They can't make you or punish you to do anything. If they want your respect, they have to earn it by communicating with you. And I don't think that's much to ask. I think that our teachers, if we're going to have specific teachers, that they should be, they should know how to win uh, over a child. Uh, if somebody is misbehaving in class, mm -hmm. let's say that they're being really disruptive. Um, do you believe then that there is some utility in having kind of like a deferential to, hey, who should take charge of the situation? Who should decide what to be done? Or do you believe that there should be like a, like an emergency meeting in the classroom where the student should vote on whether or not, you know, maybe that student should be put outside the class to like calm down for 10 minutes or something before they're let back in? Or, or how do you believe that should be handled? Do you think, do you think, uh, do you think that was a good faith question? Like, I, I like, was, do you think that, like, do you think that these dichotomies you make? It's a simple like, question. Do you it's think a simple that, question. No, no, it it's wasn't not a simple, dichotomy. Simple, There's no me, dichotomy in this question. Oh, okay. So you've, you've asked, you did actually. There's a literal dichotomy. You said, do you think this or that? That is what is a dichotomy is. It's not my. Yeah, question. there is some authority or fine. Maybe there is some authority or there is everybody's on even playing field. Well, I think that power. there's, a, I think there's a, a step in between where you can say, hey, teacher, uh, this classroom mm -hmm. is like we're doing something in this room and if somebody is like throwing eggs around the room Then you can say mm -hmm. hey kid you got to step out of the room You're hurting other people here and the That's teacher a, says that right? Uh, I mean it could be a teacher. It could be a guidance counselor It could be another student. Maybe there's a senpai in the room and the senpai says hey Listen, bro, you're throwing eggs at everybody and we don't like it. You're talking about a very specific um, circumstance that does and not. That, that is that is that is a, a, a position of power. That is a position of authority. Yeah, but you're but you're diluting the position of authority. What you, you've moved from children should be taught that this person is an authority who should be respected to now. If a kid is throwing eggs around the room, the teacher should have would, sh can tell that kid to go outside. That's totally two different things. Do you realize how you've gone like. You've, you've, you've basically retreated to a, a thing that doesn't even resemble the same thing that you started. Sure. Do I think that teachers, like if a teacher is like, of course people should have autonomy over their own space. If a teacher is using a classroom and there's other students and they're trying to learn and a student. I wonder if she's even, not... oh, hello. Oh, hello. Yes. Wait, yeah, I was oh. gone for like 20 seconds. Oh, sorry about that. I don't know what happened there. Um, can you hear me now? Yep. Did the stream lag? I don't know what happened there. I think it was just, I think it was discord. Or mm -hmm. maybe it's my website. I don't know. Website okay, so you were saying that is a, a position of authority, but you were saying that I okay, moved no, the goal. No, 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 hold so... on. What I was saying was um, you're, you've are you retreated from a position of saying this is – we bring students in here and we teach them that they need to respect this authority that's put over them, and you've now retreated to a teacher mm -hmm. should be – ah, let me finish. You've retreated you now. understand why. You've retreated you now. Excuse me. You've – excuse teacher. me. I, I know you're trying really hard on this point, but it's not landing like you think it is, okay? Um, the A teacher saying, hey, this is the space we're using for teaching right now. You're throwing eggs at other students. You're harming other students. We need to get you out of the room. That is mm -hmm. like not that is not a matter of authority that is a it that absolutely is, it is the is. most There's a reason why the teacher is saying is this the most, and not it, another is, it is the most loosest thing but i already said that there can be other examples you can have a guidance but, counselor but it, but it is an authority nevertheless correct it's not an authority you're talking about it the 100 no. is Come okay on. Wait a second. i don't know what definition of authority wait a second wait a second wait a second wait a second, wait a second. Wait a second. okay <laughs> let's let me give you another example of this that shows how ridiculous this framing is if we're <sighs> if we're roommates right and i'm hanging out in my streaming room and i'm smoking some weed and you walk in and you go and you start complaining about, I don't know, your girlfriend or something or whatever. Okay. Uh, and and uh, and I'm in my room and I'm like, dude, this is like really harshing like my high. Like, can you can you leave my office? Like, I would really appreciate that. And then you go, no, I'm not going to leave the office. And then I go, OK, can you like can we talk about this later? And you still don't leave. And then I push you out of the office because you literally refuse to physically leave my space. Is that exerting authority? I don't think so. I think that is a like I think that that definition of authority is is absurd. What you're talking about is conflict resolution with I, an extreme with situation. That, that is 100. percent That is like conflict, and that is like eventually you being like, hey, you gotta fucking leave, right? You get, yeah. You're kind of like yeah. pushing them you don't out, need right? To be a that is you need not a situation in a classroom in which the group of students kind of defer to one individual. They defer to the teacher to take hold of the situation. And to take but def 
but deferring to the teacher on certain decisions is not the same thing as placing someone in that, a position that, that you defer to somebody on the basis of authority that is no, that's you why you Do defer you to know? somebody you yes. don't know see this is this is where i don't I'm think going. you really? understand what wait, authority wait, wait, means wait, wait. so here. hold on a second then then that means that if they i defer to an adult and you don't no. yeah okay so so wait a second mm -hmm. if, if what you're saying is true then that means mm -hmm. that in order for me to get you out of my room that i'm currently using i'm deferring to an authority no, no, absolutely that's, not, because that's a conflict ridiculous. resolution among two people. That's not yes. a group of people in which and guess what? Set oh, wait, so, so are you saying that children aren't people? Like, what? You just... You I'm children... saying there's a difference between a group of people in yes. a set class dynamic and, and, like, mm -hmm. and, and, like, two in specific people who clearly are on the same level of authority because you just had to push them out at the end of the day. They but didn't respect your wishes thing. to, like, get the fuck out. I think it's per perfectly fine to, to mm -hmm. say that a teacher has the ability to remove a student that's hurting other students from the space, that's a pressing need that is and very that is just, authority. that's not authority. That see, authority. see, I, you, you seem allergic to calling something no, authority. No, I don't no, know why. No, 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 no. You no, are no, absolutely. No. Uh, Rose Rist, this is so funny because like, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm engaging with like, uh, like a, like a, like a, like a, uh, like a pupil form, uh, like a, like, you know, like a, like a, like a, what's it called? Yeah, not a larval, because it's better than you're doing better than a larva. <laughs> you're doing like you're liking like a you're liking a cocoon right now, and it's a cocoon uh -huh. debate, bro, where you think you've got something because you're saying that like someone being able to assert that like you can't do this in the space is like because this is a space that I'm in and that we're using. That's not any meaningful definition of authority. You've watered down the definition of authority to be meaningless. You started this conversation. The reason why I had to I, get to that I, point I wasn't is because you're allergic sentence. to the term. It's not. No, it's you're allergic to it addressing the actual concerns that are going on here the allergy is not from me i can acknowledge that there is like uh there's a power exchange going on when you're removing someone on a space without saying that that is teaching somebody to respect authority this is the teacher's space with other students who are using that space that is an eminent exactly usage. so she has authority she or they have authority have a, in that no, space no okay then you could okay if you if because you it's their space hold on, a second, hold on a second hold on a second Okay. I didn't think you would concede that it was their spot. I thought you would say it was like our space or something, but you even said okay. it was the teacher's you're, you're space. You're literally so. like, we're operating on different like planes of discussion right now. What you're trying okay. to do is you're being in, like a turbo plane. Am I on the lower or the higher plane? Where am I? You're on like, you're on like the, the, lower way, plane. the way lower plane right now. Because what plane. you're doing is you're doing what's called like pedantry, where you're sticking uh -huh. to a, to basically any exertion of any power at any point whatsoever represents authority. But it's interesting. And I want to point this out for everyone who's watching, because I feel at this point that we've definitely tried transferred into the sort of more of a debatey format which is fine i'm open to that i do this kind of shit all the time but mm -hmm. you've you've changed you've done a little mott and bailey you started by saying ah i think that students should learn should be taught to respect authority and now you've retreated to saying well you know if a teacher that is, ever, that is being if taught a teacher, to respect if, authority no it is not being what taught that you were taught that hey this is a teacher. Okay, I'm sorry, I'll let you finish. But it, I, the reason why I like interrupting is because I feel that, hey, once I get this out, what was about to be said, probably going to lose relevance. And that's why I like interrupting. Do you, do you want to keep going and finish that? No, or it's do you fine. Want go, go ahead and say what you want to say there. All right, perfect. Um, so th that's part of teaching the authority, right? It is the teacher. The teacher is there. The reason there is a teacher working in the space is because they hopefully possess qualifications when it comes to having gone through an educational program, when it comes to dealing with kids in these situations. Mm -hmm. They probably have some proficiency when it comes to whatever is being taught, at least a proficiency that is to a higher degree than what the student possesses. They're operating within the, you know, the teacher's space, like you said yourself, it's like their classroom or whatever. And it is because of these reasons that you should be able to like respect and understand the authority that a teacher you know, obtains and uses in those interactions between you and them there. It is not to say that you need to mindlessly obey them because we have arbitrarily placed them here. No matter who we place here, you should be respecting them on those grounds. It is, hey, here are the reasons why you should respect them. Here is where that power begins and ends. Bang, there you go. And that is that is teaching respect for authority, but it's not this characterization of like a mindless sort of like orbiting of we play somebody here now you must respect them and bend over backwards but nobody but but the, you you invented you invented that dichotomy like i did not invent that dichotomy you did that 
This was an, a dichotomy that you are now okay. having. You're, you're do fighting. You agree with, or do you disagree? You're fighting with your own your own dichotomy. Okay. I think there is a huge difference between mm -hmm. teaching someone to respect authority, which is a process mm -hmm. by which they identify there are authorities and I must respect them. I think that is a very different process than saying, okay. I'm in a classroom, there are other people here, and I have to respect the space that we have together. And this space is facilitated by this teacher. So in this one particular avenue, they can tell me to go out of the room because I'm hurting everybody else who's in the room. That's not the same thing. These are not even close okay. to the same thing. I have a very I simple think, question for you. Okay? I think, no, no, I have a very simple question for you. I have a very simple question <laughs> well, for you. I need to finish this. I need to finish this because we're going to forget. No, we're no, forget. you don't, forget. actually. No, Please. you don't. It's nope, very you don't. Please, no, very you don't. Simple. I it's, have it's a question. It's two yes or no questions. You've asked, two me yes or no questions. Of, you've asked me a lot of questions, and now it's my turn to ask you a question. Let's I know see, because I did a lot of preparation if, for this, and I feel really you, bad about it. Okay? Let's see if you respect. Please. The, let's see if you have much. any respect for authority, okay? Let's see if yeah, you have any respect okay. for authority, okay? So here's the question I have for you. Do you, can you tell me with a straight face that you think that a teacher being able to remove a student that's throwing eggs at other students because it's it's imminently interrupting the space is the same oh. thing as teaching respect for authority figures because of, as you listed, a bunch of abstract con con contexts, which, you may or may not agree with. I don't personally agree that getting a degree means you know anything. I've known a lot of fucking idiots who don't know shit about it. Like, dead serious. I've I've had so many fucking stupid teachers who had fuckloads of degrees but just couldn't teach for beans and were assholes, okay? This is something that happens all the time. We all know this happens. Do you sure, think, but they probably do you average think, simple, higher, simple like question, do you think that teaching, that what you said at the beginning, teaching students to respect authority is the same thing as a teacher being able to, to like, resolve an egg-throwing situation? Do you think and this the was thing? the exact thing i, I asked you a question simple yes or no do you think that in, in straight face do you really believe those two are mm -hmm. the same things um i don't believe that they're the same thing however i do believe that they're both examples of respecting and teaching to respect authority sure so and i believe now that to they get are back to, and i can get back to my question okay the example that i gave you when it comes to the the reasoning and the mechanization behind how i believe the respect for the teacher should be taught so the three examples i gave blah, 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 do you believe that is an example of teaching respect of authority? Uh, yes. I never contested right. that. Yeah, do, of course. Do you, do you disagree with that? That that like that? Do you think that's a wrong thing to do to teach yes. that in the yes. way that I presented yes, I, it? Yes, absolutely. So you believe it is incorrect to yes. teach students that they should defer to the authority yes. of a teacher in some situations in the classroom on the basis of the fact that hey, they're there, they possess expertise. They possess the skills, they possess experience, it's their space, da, 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 da. Do you believe that teaching kids that is, is wrong? If that is truly all that you mean, if all that you mean is that the only thing that children are taught is to respect the time of another of another human being and uh, no, that to person... Respect those... Wait, I, I'm not done. You got to let me finish the sentence for fuck's sake. But you're like, asking uh, a different question. No, I'm not. You okay. you think I am because you you are. this entire <clears throat> conversation has been you battling a a very strange straw man and it's been very visible to me because there's been multiple times where I've tried to say something and you've cut me off to say something that was completely different than what I was going to say. So I would appreciate it if you would argue with the person that's in front of you and not with some made up person in your head. So do you notice how during this entire conversation, not once have I gone on like a little thing about like you or the way you are engaging with this conversation. You. That's perfect. Everything I've said has been about what we're discussing and that's what the idea is. Perfectly are. fine. I, that's, I just want to point that out. Go for sure. it. Sure. I mean, if that's a, if you think that's a point for you, I think that addressing people's arguments as they are and as they're presented, uh, addition in addition to re rhetoric, is perfectly legitimate. Mm -hmm. I have no right, shame. Sure. I have no. There's. I don't feel like there's anything wrong with that whatsoever. So maybe that was a gotcha or something. But, um, yeah. Uh, so uh, the question that can you repeat the question that you asked again? Because we we ended up getting off, and then I was going to answer it, and then you so, cut me off. Is the example of teaching that uh -huh. a student should respect, you know, a teacher in this environment on the basis of their experience, their expertise, like you said, the classroom being their space, do you believe that teaching kids to respect the teacher on the basis of those grounds is wrong? Can they leave? If the student feels that that is not, that their, that their side of things is not being held up, can the student leave without, without being punished? Yes or no? Um, but that depends on what you mean by like punish. If there's a reason why the kids don't want to be there, if they believe that this teacher is treating them poorly or whatever, and they choose to leave for that, and they want to have a different teacher, then of course they should be able to leave okay. and go with a different teacher. Yeah, then I think that that's I think that that is a reasonable uh, type of respect to, to okay. ask. But but that is not what perfect. We're about. But that's not what we. Said. So then 
we do not disagree on the fact that it is good to, to some extent teach kids about the need to respect people and respect people with authority. But that's different. Be teaching people to respect other humans. But we, we agree that this was an example of teaching people to respect authority and then no, we went through it and we no, agreed we that it wasn't wrong. No, you, no, we didn't. You said. Wait, I literally, I asked you oh yes or no God. if this was oh an example of this teaching is, kids to this respect is the authority. Most, you said yes. Dude, dude, I'm sorry, but like, again, I'm going to do it again. I'm just going to own it right here. Like this argumentation tactic, in my opinion, is remarkably weak. Okay. You're no, fixing. You're refusing. You're li yeah. I am going to talk about your rhetoric because we're engaging in a rhetorical exchange right now. You're in, you're at. You're literally not engaging with the question at hand. So when you say, uh, "Is it teaching? Is it teaching an authority to to teach students to be respectful of like in general of experience and be respectful of spaces that they're in?" That is not respecting authority. Now, if you want to okay. define that very broadly as a form of a respect to authority, you're welcome to do that. But I don't think that's the same. I would categorize that as teaching a kid like like how to like how to socialize with other people, how to respect other human beings. Which and specifically I think is with people with different power levels than you, but right? They specifically somebody see, with that's, expertise ah, and see, specifically somebody see, with competency. This is where and that's what and that's is, what differentiates this is where, this is where and that's what differentiates this type of respect, respect to authority from Dude, respect with so equals, weas, right? This is so weasley. Just say that you think that teachers have the right to fucking tell kids what to do in every aspect. Like, if you want to say that, the reality is, I don't think so. I don't think that students, sh I don't think that teachers should be an authority over children. I don't think that a degree, even two degrees, even three degrees, makes you, gives you the pass to be an authority over children. I think okay. that if you can say, here's what I've learned, here's what I can teach you, you want to come and you can come into my te my classroom and I'll teach you here. Here are like, you know, don't yell. Don't make it so that other students can't learn that. Sure. That's perfectly fine. But the reality okay. so is that's not what we were talking about at the beginning. Then at all. I'm going close. to to restate the question sure. um, go ahead and, and then it again. We'll, we'll go to something else. OK, you're so got, maybe eventually so, you'll get the answer you're looking for. Maybe eventually, or yeah, I'll maybe get, you'll a get that, that perfect it, straw man, or, or you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe, maybe I'll maybe. get a perfect straw man when I'm asking yeah, questions super, and following super a logical sick strain. If, after you maybe keep going possible. fishing, do you, do you want to change possible. your change your channel to gone fishing? Yeah. All right, let's go. Good one. Come on, um, one. Okay, so I'm gonna check if the answers change on this, and sure. if not, then we'll move on. And if okay. yes, then I have a cool clip. So, sure. um, was the example of teaching kids respectful authority of teachers on the basis of their expertise, their experience, that being their learning space, that being the classroom. Do you believe this is an example of teaching respect for authority? Do I think that asking like, that, wait, okay, sorry. Can you word that again? Like we're okay. getting to- Do you believe that teaching students to respect a teacher in a classroom teacher. environment on yeah. the basis of competency, experience, expertise and the fact that it's their space it is their classroom do you believe that teaching kids that is an example of teaching people respect for authority and like Pro therefore they should defer to them provided that the student actually has a say in that in that equation that they can leave if they don't think if their conclusion is that this person is not actually competent to teach me then then no i would not consider that an a a a uh a conversation of authority because okay authority perfect in... because you directly answered um, you directly answered yes to that question like five minutes ago. Because that's, you worded, that's because what you I worded want to it differently. Nope, I worded it very similar, and we will. I'll yeah. go and look through it later. Well, I I really hope yeah. that like I hope you accomplished whatever it was that you. What maybe I should ask you? What are you hoping to accomplish? Uh, I mean, I could send you uh, my notes before this debate. And I, mean, you I don't can really see care about just... your notes. They didn't seem to help very much. Uh, yeah, I agree. We got. I, I got a bit surprised when it came down that we don't actually have any policies or anything we want to push yeah totally yeah if you, when you don't when you don't have internet internet virtue signaling points that you can go i support i vote for me in this no that's stupid See, yeah, if, because if, out of this, discourse wait, and policy wait, it is this, absolutely this, the policy that is the virtue this signaling is this effort. is the uh, this is the funniest thing to me ever like the fact that this entire conversation has boiled down to you being completely unwilling to actually engage with anything outside of your very 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 slim way of interpreting politics is like frustrating because it's like this whole conversation, we've been talking about all these different things, but at the end of the day, your problem is 
this is what and, I, and I'm, I'm gonna be a little presumptive here but you think I'm an unpragmatic uh, anarchist who doesn't have any policy prescriptions but when I told you that policy prescriptions is not what I'm even trying to talk about because I'm not talking about advocating for some politician to pick up some w policy those things are a totally different conversation we're talking about the underlying structures here and how I think we reach meaningful change and you're unwilling to engage with that because you say ah well you don't have a quippy three-point plan but that's not what I'm talking about I've never been talking about I've never advocated for to be talking about that you want to have a conversation with i don't know maybe you want to like measure measure the size of your studies or whatever with other people that's perfectly fine you can do that i, I don't think i've said a single study in this entire debate yeah, but that's fine but you know i mean you made the joke about the data mail i'm just you know just playing along with you so i don't know right. like i don't really know i don't really know like uh, I think I think there was a lot of room for this conversation to have like a lot of productive ends. And I feel like we did touch on some really in interesting issues, but you seem fixated on one uh, insisting that that policy, which even by your own words is an incredibly vaguely defined term, is the thing that has to be talked about here. And then secondly, when we actually engage with- Well, to when, be fair, I didn't say it had to. I said it's okay for the purpose of this discussion that we don't have it, but generally I would prefer if we did have policy. Well, so sure, just but I mean, well, that's, but, but you came to talk to me and you came to talk to me about what I believe on things. And I don't think that policy is what we're talking about here. I think we're talking about philosophy. I think we're talking- yeah, And about that's why I contact prepared for both. Sure. Well, that's why I said that, hey, it's fine. We can do the discussion without the policy, but it would have been cool. I mean, but, but that's weird that you say that you prepared for both because you didn't. You at least, Or at least if you did, you didn't use those notes because all that you engaged on for most of this time was was pedantry around the I think I've probably given the then, most comprehensive and, breakdown and then, but from another person was, on I your mean, takes on schooling. It's really interesting. Right? I was in the middle of a sentence there and you, you did that again. You really you told me to use my spine. I'm using my well, spine. I mean, but using your spine means say, hey, oh, here, I'm going to say something, not like literally mm -hmm. try to just talk over the other person because i haven't talked over you like that's just mm. yeah you know um so yeah uh like i don't know like it's fine like i get it like if you believe that like all of this is is equal and that we should you know like all of these scenarios that we've said are are all easily like defined as any any human relationship of respect um or or honor or whatever or being polite to other people is an example of authority i don't think that is i think that's an incoherent definition of authority for any of the purposes with which we we're discussing and i don't think that like uh, a teacher having the ability to say like hey you're making a noise in my in the space that we're trying to do something in is any different from like a roommate saying yeah can you get out of my room like maybe they have maybe you could argue that like they well, have that the, position, you have the authority, right? But they're not respecting it, so you have to resort to force. It's your well, room, no, right? See that, it's your no, space. See, no, no, see, see, you that's... expect them. No, because... Uh, see, it's okay. This... We... No, 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 no. It's we not, have to get it's into not, the room it's, example. It's, it's, I need to a... get people to jump in here because okay, you've been going you know, to... Why don't we minutes. do this? Why don't you jump out here? Because I don't think this conversation is going anywhere. And, like, frankly, I'm not okay. really here to, like, go back around when you're completely inflexible on what you mm. define as authority. And the interesting reason is the reason why... The only person the that is giving two different answers for the same question in this debate It was is... not the same question. And anyway... Okay, we'll see. Yeah, if... And, and do you think perhaps that... Do you think perhaps that that the reason for that for for whatever you are positing which i don't even know if that's fucking true like like the whole reason is you had to reword it like three times so that we could come to an agreement and in between but you asked for a rewarding multiple that? times no, you I asked, asked for, for a i asked you to restate it i never asked for you to reword anything i'm i'm interested in getting your actual opinion not like whatever you want to concoct to like i don't know win your election or whatever like uh, like I'm, I'm, I'm interested in actually getting to what you actually believe in the things that you say. So when you say things like I add that you think that absolutely students should respect authority and then we boil it down and there's like a conversation where you reveal that you believe that it's a, that, it, that an interaction between two individuals is an, is an interaction of authority. I think that that's a watering down of authority that leads to, um, a lot of what I would call like rhetorical and political um slights of hand where you go ah well in this conversation i will say that authority is just the ability for a teacher to say like hey the student is causing problems they need to be out of the room and then in another conversation you will then argue in favor of schools teaching kids that their that their teachers have authority over them because they're qualified 
Those are two different, com completely different outcomes. But I think it's convenient for people from your position to constantly have a Mott and Bailey about what authority actually is. If we're just talking about the ability for like a teacher to be able to have a basic level of human control over their environment and not have a kid throwing eggs, sure. If you want to call that an authority, they can have that particular authority. But do I think students should be taught that a teacher is an authority over them? No. These are fundamentally different things. It's that mm -hmm. simple. You gave two different answers to that question, but we'll see. Okay, Maybe cool. I missed See, I can see you have, you've gotten trapped in the dialogue tree. So this is why I'm saying I think that, like, at this point, we're only going to start irritating each other and getting, like, <sighs> more annoyed. Because, like, that response to, to what I just said there is mm -hmm. is completely irrelevant and also stupid. Like, I just explained my position. And you go, well, two answers or something. Okay, so why don't you engage well, it can the be indicative. Of, What's it of indicative of? Of what? Uh, well, you this whole conversation, I... you're fishing for gotchas, and then you're trying to like act like you're psychoanalyzing me, dude. Come the fuck on with this, chill. Like what? Not the fuck? only you're in have no I not made, not only have I not made a single claim to your character throughout mm -hmm. this entire debate, I don't know, that but like you have sufficiently managed to not only make a characterization of my character but also made a characterization of my character making a characterization of your character. So it seems like you have that entire field covered for both of us, which is why I didn't necessarily feel the need to do so. Yeah. Um, now, there is just, and I, I know you, you kind of feel this is run up, but there's just one final thing, and I really don't think this will take a lot of time at all. Sure. Um, and this is actually the one I went to start it with, but it was the, the thing about time and paying attention to time and time measurement that is taught as like a disciplinary thing in school. Yeah. I believe that that is absolutely a good disciplinary skill that should absolutely be taught in school because time management, being punctual, is a vital step in demonstrating respect, in demonstrating competency, and being able to do the things that you do in a civil society. And for that, I think that a school place is a very good place for you to be able to know and learn those good time management skills without them having the significant consequences that they might have in an adult life, where being late could be the difference between being employed, in the, your case, in the US, having health insurance and not having health insurance, versus in school being you know, marked down as late or not being marked down as late. And that's okay. why I think that the time measurements goes pretty much. I'm, I'm very happy that you chose this to be the thing that you ended on, because mm -hmm. um, in this, you've demonstrated that, like, I don't think you've actually, like, thought through the time management portion first of all, all right. students notoriously schools are notoriously bad at teaching kids time management kids learn mm -hmm. nothing from school about time management they learn nothing in fact they they in fact time management learning is like the main thing like i literally read a study on stream about how uh sp in america especially but this is based on america it was by an american institution the time management portion of school is one of the things that most traumatized excuse me, traumatizes people for most of their life. They spend the rest of their life feeling anxious about the way that they were treated in schools, schools all across the board. Any fucking educator that you go and try to listen to about this will tell you that schools absolutely fucking suck at teaching any sort of skill of time management. And that's because the only thing they teach is listening to the bell to showing up on time when an authority tells you on time. They don't actually teach you how to schedule things. They don't actually teach you how to schedule your homework, how to maintain a work-life balance because they don't care. They just teach you to show up when the bell rings or else you get detention. And that, as it turns out, really traumatizes people because it's basically like putting kids in a fucking prison where they're told they have to go from here to here to here. They have to ask for permission for everything. They can't have any independence whatsoever. So this idea that schools teach time management is first of all, doesn't happen at all probably won't happen and third of all reveals that you're projecting your particular economic value onto a skill that's being taught notice that the first thing that you said when talking about why they need to learn time management was because they could get fired from a job that you is would... the very last thing i said was it the last thing i'm sorry what it was did you say first? it was the last thing I said. it was the example i gave at the very end what was, what was the first thing that you said then the first thing I said as like respect for your okay. peers and the people so, around you. So you think that, so first of all, let's, then I'll, I'll address that. It wasn't the first thing you said. It was one that, that stuck out to me. I, I didn't hear that first one. The first Ooh. thing that you said 
uh, teaching people respect, I I strongly disagree. I don't think that any of the skills that are taught in schools. Teach don't you think time management is is good to show respect to show up on wait, wait, time? time manage, wait, wait, somebody? Time management is a little different than like punctuality. Those are two different things. However, yeah, sure. uh, I do think that generally punctuality can be very can be respectful. If you show up late mm -hmm. for somebody, that can be bad. But schools don't teach you that. Schools don't teach you that at all. In fact, this is like I literally watched a video specifically about this particular issue where they talk mm -hmm. about the thing that is taught by having bells and strict start times and strict end times is regimentation, not punctuality, mm -hmm. not time management. It's regimentation. It's obey the rules, show up before the bell rings or you get hurt for it. That's what it teaches. So, mm -hmm. no, I don't think that is useful. If a school, if there's all kinds of ways that you can teach punctuality, and I do agree, punctuality is a very valuable skill. There's all kinds of valuable schools that some people pick up in the school system, but that I don't think the school system does a really good job. I don't think the, the school system, it, either in its foundations or in its current form, or even in many of the reforms that people have offered, actually teaches anyone time management especially for the purpose of respect what they do mm -hmm. teach is how to show up at your job on time so you don't get fired and i think okay. that that goes back to the thing i said at the very beginning of this which is that it before is we go back to that let's finish with this okay sure okay so now we're kind of getting back to and there's a reason why i wanted to start at the end of why school is bad at the moment so that we would hopefully be able to avoid things like this um popping up so damn how i do 100 percent recognize and we both did this we both did this at the very beginning because i kind of thought that this was, this is the direction we would go that there are absolutely issues in how these all these skills are taught and how everything basically in school is done today especially yeah. in the u.s no matter how much the you know American brand seeks to deny that through your entrenched nationalism that you have gotten through your hyper authoritarian school systems. But regardless of that, um, what's trying to be conveyed here is that it's absolutely possible to teach punctuality and teach time, time management in a way that isn't in a, like a traumatizing manner that you may have discussed, you know, previously in those specific examples. So for instance, if rather than, hey, you're late, fuck you, you get detention, you res you like disrespected me as a teacher, as an authority, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Instead of doing that, being like, hey, you came late, now what's going to end up happening is that you have, you know, kind of like disrupted, you know, the environment for the rest of us. It's kind of a sign okay. of disrespect to like a lot of your peers because okay. now they who were here and they put in the time and they put in the effort and they had the respect to be here on time, sure. their learning is kind of delayed a bit. So there is a difference in different approaches to how to be able to teach time management and punctuality. Okay. I believe that it is possible for schools to be able to teach this in a good way that is conducive and that gives the kids the skills that they need in order to succeed later in life. Whether that be in the realm of, you know, like respect and punctuality for family and friends, or it could be in a professional capacity, that's still an important skill to have. And it can absolutely be taught in a good and productive way in schools. I mean, that's nice. Um, and Do you I disagree with that? I mean, I think it's possible. I think it's conceivable of a okay. school system okay. that teaches some time management skills, but I also think that there's mm -hmm. all kinds of other ways to teach time management skills, like tons, tons. I, I mean, Are any of them the one that I suggested just now? Uh, no. I mean, wait, okay. what? I mean, sure. Wait, wait. But definitionally, yes. Like, obviously, I said I think that you could teach that. But... So then there is no disagreement. You just want to add to, well, like, what I propose. Yeah, right? I mean, of course I do. Of course I want yeah. to add, but, like, like if if but you're just making up a you're making up a thing like yeah it's possible for a school to do that but they're not and they don't and, and we, they we never should have. strive towards teaching them to do that That's right? and great. making sure I, the I school agree can with you that. i don't disagree with striving right, that perfect to so striving. then to be very if you want clear. to do that that's sure if that's what you're if that's what you're calling is okay. i think it would be better if schools did teach some level of respect uh of 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 time management uh, mm -hmm. like with regard to that, sure, that'd be great. I think it would be way better okay, if they okay. got rid of like bell systems and, and, and did this. I mean, t teachers have talked about this. Do you want to know something time. crazy? What? In, in, at least in Sweden, I haven't been to a single school except for when I went to an American school that had a uh -huh. bell in it. Oh, that's great. There, there, there's absolutely oh, existing models for how this, how this could. Yeah, good job, Sweden. It's not me. Don't say good job to me. It's not me. But, um, and the good reason why I wanted to point this out and the reason why we got into this initially is because these were all listed as sort of like, inherent flaws What's to the sorry sorry uh yeah uh, this the... is the this is which part of this is the one uh this was way before when i asked you yeah, what but which of the, which of the points that you that you drew up out of mine was this one going to 
Which one did this associate with? You said exam pressure, trauma, discrimination, overcrowding, poor funding, railroading, overt disciplinary requirements. Bad how we got into this and how we got into the thing about, for instance, the respecting your teachers bit was that uh, it kept getting brought up that you talked about these civic values that kids yeah, were yeah. being indoctrinated right. into. Yes, and right. I asked you for examples of those and you gave those examples and the time management some, aspect was one of them. Sure, but that's one. Yeah, of, and the time one. management was one of those examples. Right. But, so, but, and wait, the but point you're, of my you're, argumentation you're was to demonstrate that this was that's not that's not an inherent part of something that is wrong with schools. That is something that schools can absolutely be doing correct. That is not a symptom of schools inherently and something that they can never resolve. Right. It is a symptom of schools right now doing it poorly. It's well, not an argument for throwing okay. out schools. It's an argument for reforming schools. Uh, okay, but I will note that that was a subtopic of another major topic. And I would say that this would be filed if we're going to stick to with what you drew up for me at the beginning to work on, to talk about mm -hmm. the overt disciplinary requirements. This is one of those overt, overt disciplinary requirements. It's not the only one. And so, sure, do I think that one of those sub features of the of the overt disciplinary requirements well, could potentially conceivably be done? Um, yeah, that I never disagreed with you on that. That's like this is not. Well, like, you did. No, I did because this was actually. listed as like. See, an, this, is, an... this was so frustrating. Like, I feel like I, I tell you exact. I tell you exactly what I think about these things, and then you you try and act like I said something different or something when I really didn't. You just All admitted right. now this was a subtopic of one of the major ones that you asked me whether I thought these were intrinsic or not. I do think this is one of the important. major arguments that you have regardless of the quality of school. It was one of the four arguments of violation of child's autonomy, truancy is bad for families, kids don't get much from school, and state indoctrination. That is the fourth point there. State indoctrination? No, this is a, yes. this is a piece. No, 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 hold on. We're talking specifically about- Wait, I, this was well, the I, I, example I, I, of no, state no, no, it's my turn now. It's my turn now. Hold on. Number four, okay. state indoctrination. You asked me for examples mm -hmm. of state indoctrination. This was yep. one of them, correct? Mm -hmm. Among yep. many others. So... That was not one of the four points. It was a sub point to the four points, the four points which you drew up, which wait, I- So it's included in the four points. Sure, but wait, but, but wait a yeah. minute. Wait, wait, hold okay. on. Are you not, are you not like understanding what a sub point is? Just because one of the sub points can be resolved doesn't mean- It doesn't mean the entire can. point of state indoctrination is false. Yes, thank you. Thank well, you. And I never stated anything different. I was just yes, stating but that- but you did actually. Before no, that, I was stating before that this, specifically this, you stated- the argument about state indoctrination right. in the form of time management is not a good argument you stated that and you went on a little bit of a tirade here just a second ago talking about how I was not a tirade. Okay. excuse me you went on an example uh, on, a, on a tear about how this is not solved by abolishing the system but instead mm -hmm. by reform for a sub point mm -hmm. of a larger yep. point and so what i'm saying is you did not defeat that point. You only talked about one sub point, but you did but not. Part of defeating not a whole point is defeating sub points on the way. Except you didn't really defeat the sub point. I just. Well, I literally said, did no, because this I is not was, an inherent oh my flaw God, dude, what of is school. Up? This is you have debate. We agree bro that brain. this you is. You really have debate, bro brain. You you talked about one particular example and you said in some hypothetical, is it possible for this particular skill that is in some part a government indoctrination to be taught well in schools. Of course, I think that you could, that a school could potentially do so that. Therefore, it's not an argument against mandatory schooling. It's an argument for reforming school. No. That, that sub point doesn't no. belong in the wait, field of points wait, 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 wait. That's against true. mandatory. No, education. see, this is, where you, this is where you're getting too eager because just because there is a potential, there's a potential world in which a hypothetical school could do this thing correctly. We does thought not... it could be done. Excuse and we me, I was literally explaining what I was saying. So I know that you're again, you're very excited to get your debate bro points. You're not going to get them. So here you go. Th exactly what I had just said. So even though this thing, there is a, a hypothetical school you could invent in your head in the magical wonderland where you invent any school, you could have a school that does teach um, uh, time management correct, uh, correctly. But that doesn't mean that it's going to happen in this school system or that this school system would encourage that. So, sure, I've never once disagreed with you once on the, on the state that we could make the existing school system better in certain ways. Of course we can. There are all kinds of little tweaks that we could do here, but they don't f solve the underlying problems. And the underlying problems of which this is a symptom. You see, you're, you're treating a symptom and not the cause in any way. So it... It's very silly. It's like saying, ah, it can't be a cold because you took Tylenol and it made your nose stop running. Well, no, it's still a cold. You just took Tylenol to deal with the nose running. 
Do you see what I mean? You're treating a symptom and not the cause. The the demand for uh for state uh, indoctrination and the imp imposition of what an ideal citizen is on those on those students is the problem. And this is one of the symptoms of that problem. You may be able to, in some hypothetical, fix that part, but there's still all of the other parts of that operating. And that's provided that you can actually make it happen, which you haven't. Even if you but we reduce... agreed that it could be made to of, happen. But of course, many and we things... also see that in a lot of other countries, this time management aspect is handled. In well, we haven't actually, we never proved that. All you've said is that one country that a school that you went to didn't have bells. I don't think that that's. No, even... I'm saying that it is standard practice and basically like. You don't have, you don't have that data. Do have... I'm sorry. You don't, you don't. I, okay. I, 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 yeah. Okay, fine. I don't have the data. It's true. All, all Europeans who are listening to this right now, uh, can we have a one? If you did have a bell in your school in Europe, and a two if you did not have a bell in your school, and that's uh, maybe that's wrong, but there is a lot. There's a fuck ton of schools that don't use bells. Maybe this is an American thing, but hey, I'm not necessarily expecting a Twitch chat to give the most representative or the most accurate of answers on this. But sure. That's, so, right. but the point, the the greater point stands. Uh, no, is... and, and and I need to make another just because that just because me disapproving of the the argument about the time management thing specifically as not being a functional argument against school mandates. But it is. Of course, that doesn't mean that the entire argument against school mandate falls apart 100%. No, I never claimed any different. I'm just saying that that sub point to that broader argument doesn't belong there. And no, the no, purpose no, no. and how See, I'm going about is... trying to work through this argument is by knocking out the sub points until one main point falls and then going to the next one, trying to knock out the sub points. Okay. Ba, 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 ba. And that's typically, very... and I realize now that we are far, far um, too short on time to be able to work through yeah, many well, more of these sub points. Clearly. I mean, but I, I just think that's a strange approach because to me, it seems like uh, acknowledging, oh, wow, actually our school systems do have a lot of state indoctrination built into them that are deeply, deeply ingrained into the system. The, your argument for, quote unquote, knocking out this sub point doesn't actually knock it out. All it does is create a hypothetical school that does not actually exist in which it could potentially happen, but it doesn't exist and okay. it hasn't existed, even though even though educators do acknowledge that time management is taught poorly. It's talked about all the time. This is a well-recognized issue. It still doesn't change the answer okay. to that. And then the question, of course, that follows is why doesn't it change? And the answer, of course, is. Well, it's actually very convenient for the people who decide what a good citizen is to have a good citizen be somebody who follows the rules, who goes where they're told when the time is, who shows up to their job on time and is never late. But that's not realistic. And also, that's not a good way of teaching time management. So it doesn't knock out my point. It, it You didn't okay. address the we, core we're, point. We're going to... to... Work, I just want to work through this one final thing. Just work through a very, sure. very like basic logic turn. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... The, the argument that is being made is you believe that the mandatory schooling should be abolished. Mm -hmm. And part of the yes. threshold for mm -hmm. that to be met, it needs to be an argument that specifically is intrinsic to mandatory schooling and not something that can be reformed out of mandatory schooling. Mm -hmm. For if an issue you point out can be reformed out of mandatory schooling, it is not an argument against mandatory schooling. It is an argument for reforming it out. Do we agree with this so far? No, I don't agree with that. And here's the reason why. Uh, I can give you another example. Let's say that uh, let's say that I am for the abolishment of a um, of a standing army. We'll just pick something ridiculous, but that's very clear and easy. Let's say I'm against the abolish, or I'm for the abolishment of a standing army. I want to get rid of standing armies because I think they're bad. And up, I'm in those examples, the things that I list of the shit that happens as a result of having standing armies is that, well, when like, let's say, well, when you have a lot of equipment sitting around, you know, people want to use it. That equipment, that equipment, there's a pressure to use things that you build. This is just, just a very rudimentary example. We're not going to go, I hope we're not going to go too, super deep onto this, but I can show you the difference. You might say, ah, well, that's a problem of over-equipment. And we can solve that particular issue um, because of just not equipping the army as much. That doesn't mean it's not an argument against a standing army. It is one of many potential confounding issues that all add up to lead to my position. So this is a very strange and granular and extremely hyper-fixated point 
and it doesn't even do what you're saying it does. It doesn't knock out that point at all. This is just one example of the many ways in which schools intrinsically, from the way they were designed, modern schools, modern mandatory schools, are designed to force people to behave as a certain ideal citizen. And they're pounded into that role even if it doesn't fit them well, even if it causes them harm because it is deemed because of, by, by the state or by the economy or by the very complicated democratic process that kids got to go through this. And I don't agree with that. So there you go. That doesn't, this doesn't affect the point at all. It, you're just, you're, again, you're literally addressing one symptom and ignoring everything else. It doesn't have anything to do with intrinsic this or intrinsic that. This is a okay. real attachment. And what you have to, and what you're doing is by removing it from the context and putting it into an imaginary school that could exist, you're ignoring what reinforces school behaving that way in the first right. place. Does that make sense? Um, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but it doesn't like overcome the very like like basic surface level um, logic that I was trying to work through there. I okay. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm generally misunderstanding something, and I'll watch it back later, and I'll be like, "Holy fuck, I'm brain dead," or maybe not. Who knows? Um, okay. Yeah, I guess like I another thing that that's like when I was watching the video, just I'm curious. Do you believe that the average fourteen year old is not like meaningfully more intelligent or responsible than the average eighteen year old? What? Do you believe that the average 14 year old is not meaningfully more intelligent or responsible than the average 18 year old? Do you mean the other way around that an 18 year old is more intelligent? I mean, it doesn't matter what order it's around. Do you I believe mean, I that think as a, that a as a general, as a very general rule, probably most 18 year olds are smarter than 14 year olds. They've lived for okay. four more years in an incredibly uh, like major part of development, but that's not entirely true. There are all kinds of precocious teenagers who've been really good. I think like, like there's not just outliers either. I think there are a lot of students who are really smart at the age of 14. And there's a lot of students cool. who are in kids who are but if going by the average, right? Yeah. For sure. those of you saying this is a weird question, this is taken verbatim from. Yeah, I mean, sure. This sounds this. I mean, sure. Okay. I don't know what you're, I don't know what you're, I, I don't know what you're getting at. And I don't know what you're quoting. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm generally like curious if, if that, that's like something that you believe or was just like a rhetorical. Wait, what? Sort of thing. I don't know what, I do not know what you're talking about. Like I actually, okay, the, no the question was, do you, do you believe that the average 14 year old is not meaningfully more intelligent or responsible than the average 18 year old? Do you I, believe that an 18 year old and a 14 year old are on average at the same degree of intelligence or responsibility? No, probably not. No, I mean, okay. I don't think so. Right. I don't, did I talk, did I say that, that was said in your first video? Um, what did I say, can you quote me that? It was about whether or not, uh, no, you, can you, you can you this quote, in... no, I want you to quote me it. If you're going to try and quote. Quote, sure. Grab me. I can, can give you the quote. context, and then maybe you could remember it, and then maybe yeah, you didn't please. need to. Yeah, please. That would be fantastic. Quote, if please do. So the context of this was that you were saying that, oh, what well, people won't choose to attend classes. And you said, well, at 18, we expect people to be able to attend classes, and there isn't a meaningful difference in, like, responsibility and challenges between a 14-year-old and an 18-year-old on average. So therefore, we shouldn't be worried about them not choosing to do classes, because at 18 years old, they choose to do classes. Um, what? No, I let me see. Like, Hopefully, your transcript know. enabled. Maybe that doesn't sound like 18. my wording at all, nor does it sound like my argument, but I mean, maybe. Okay, perfect. I have quoting. So please, from please. the video, Magma Hot Take Compulsory Schooling Sucks yes, at 35.04 okay, in fine. college. And let me tell you, the yeah. average 18-year-old who's going into college is not smarter than the average 14-year-old, not meaningfully. They're just as dumb. I don't know. Yeah, I guess let's watch it. Let's see. Okay, I read out the transcript, but you sure. can watch it as well if you I mean, want. I don't know. Is there context there or something? I don't know. That doesn't even... It's you talking about whether or not they're going to go... Sounds like, sounds like maybe I misspoke. Maybe I meant it the other way around. I don't know. Let's see. You said this was hot, magma hot take. Okay, let's see. 3504. 3504. Let's bring it up here. I'll put it on the screen and everything. 3504. Let's see. Let's do it. Like they are going to get in trouble without having to jump through hoops and get a Here we go. to Hold attend on. each class. Um, it would be considered standard to publish uh, lesson notes from each day so that if students needed to take a day off because they were sick or exhausted or, uh, or mentally unwell, that they could do so without feeling like they are going to get in trouble, without having right. to jump through hoops and get a doctor's note and all of this nonsense. They could just not if they wanted to. We already do this in college. 
And let me tell you, the average 18-year-old who's going into college is not smarter than the average 14-year-old. Not yeah. meaningfully. They're just as dumb. But in college, we let the students skip. All right. Yeah, it was probably a little bit hyperbolic. But, I mean, right. I still think that I still think that my, my overall point <laughs> stands there. My overall point, which was that with regard to showing up to class on time, the, a 14-year-old and an 18-year-old is about the same. But, yeah, it was a little bit hyperbolic. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, on average, 18-year-olds are going to be a little bit smarter. But, like... Meaningfully? Uh, Do you think they would be meaningfully smarter? Yeah, I think they would be meaningfully smarter. But, I mean, like... Right. But, I, I mean, you're you're grabbing from a stream, and you're talking about a very, a very specific point in which I was referring, in the context of that video, very specifically to their ability mm -hmm. to show up on time without getting in mm -hmm. trouble. And for that, I absolutely think there's basically no difference between an 18-year-old and a 14-year-old. I showed up. I drove my like, well, I didn't drive myself in that particular case, but I went out to the bus uh, and got to my classes on time for high school. Just in fact, just as easily as I did at 18 for that particular mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. I mean, sure. All if right. you if, if that if uh, I, I can, I will gladly own that that was a little bit hyperbolic, that particular line. But I still think that within the context, my point completely stands, which is that in the context of attending classes on time, there's no real meaningful difference between an 18 year old and a 14 year old with regard to being able to show up on time. And we and that seems to be reflected I, by basically every school in America having kids show up to class at 14 on time for the entirety of high school. Yep, I would basically, um, I mean, I would uh, I would still disagree to some extent, although okay. it's less inflammatory, so I disagree less. But I was just like checking for consistency, really. And then yeah. I have one yeah, final thing here. Yeah. Um, do you believe that people should never have to do something they don't want to do? Um, I mean, I think it depends on what you mean. Like, uh, do I believe that people should never, I mean... There's a lot. There's a lot to that question. That's a pretty big philosophical question. Do I believe that people yeah. should? Yeah. Do I believe that people should not have to do uh, things that they don't want to do in general? Mm -hmm. Yes. I generally believe that people should be able to live the life that they want to live, that you shouldn't coerce people into doing things. Um, I think that there are ever actually I should have thrown that in. There. That was an ever there as well. Ever? Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, if we yeah because I don't think that people should be forced to do things that they don't want to do ever. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that we should force people to do things. Like, I mean, wait, are you are you doing? A, is this like a clip thing, like where you're taking like a rant, like a, a rant that I was doing and saying like, hey, and then you're taking it out of context and trying to make? No, that's why I'm asking you about it. If I were to do it in a bad faith manner, I'd just be on stream like, oh, look at what she believes that would justify X, Y, and Z, yada yada yada. And instead, I'm asking you about it here when you're right here to talk yeah, about it. Sure. Yeah, if you're if you're if you're asking like what I think about that, yeah, I don't think that mm -hmm. we should. I think we should avoid forcing people to do the things that they don't want to do. I really think we should we should take that very mm -hmm. seriously. Now, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I do think that there are some situations where we don't really have much of a choice. I don't know if these really apply to like conversations of coercion. And in fact, like a lot of anarchist thinkers have, have gone back and forth on this particular thing. Like, for example, like, uh, like the world is passively coercive. So some anarchists would use things like natural coercion. So like, for example, we don't have a choice in the fact that we're born with stomachs that demand that we eat. So is, are we being coerced by our stomach? Yes. But without adopting like, extreme zen buddhism where you like uh, ascend hunger i don't think that we can like 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 we can reasonably consider that like a, a form of coercion like we have to eat humans mm -hmm. have to eat same thing goes for like struggles with animals but as far as society goes i really think that we should very much avoid forcing people to do things that they don't want to do by and large like as much as possible what about like if and this is like kind of bring it back to the discussion um, what about if like a, a kid, for instance, like wants to refuse to take some form of medication or treatment that is necessary for their survival? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think that we should do our best to convince that child to take their medicine. That's what I think. But if they, if they, if they just, they're like, nope, I don't want to take it. Should we like stand up and be like, Hey, no. Oh, I mean, well, it depends what you mean this. by we. Like, see, this is where this uh, is one of the conversations that I got to with Hans, uh -huh. where there was a uh, uh -huh. there was a difference between um, there was a difference between like uh, like we and me. Now, me, uh -huh. if I had a kid and uh -huh. I would be, I would be like in that particular instance, I would be an authoritarian about that because uh -huh. I would make that call and I would bear the pain of that. But I don't think uh -huh. that that role can be um, easily. Uh, like can be distanced out to like a state and say like, oh, a state should be able to do this thing or should be able to do this. Um, so mm -hmm. it depends on what you mean by we. Do I think that- So like, then like, uh -huh. if, like, if, like, if, mm -hmm. okay. 
So in the in the in this situation of like a kid that refuses to take a life saving medica medication, which to me seems like Ooh. an extreme outlier, I would say that for me personally, I would give the kid the medicine. You know, I would probably Ooh. use force to give the kid medicine, and that is my own like moral problem. And I would w want to work that out with the kid, and I would hope that I could mend my relationship with the kid because forcing a kid to take medicine is really traumatic. Um, and I would hope to mend my relationship with that ch with my child. You know, um, but. Uh, I would make the call there that this is an emergency situation where this kid isn't isn't thinking correctly, but I'm taking that onto myself, and that is a relate that I have to bear personally the the repercussions for that. I don't think that you can easily push that off onto a state, and I think that the moment that you do, each step that you remove yourself from the direct relationship to the person who's being the recipient of the force, um, you you lose details that are vital to that. Um, an mm -hmm. example that I talked about with this is that like. I've made some really tough moral decisions in my life. I've had mm -hmm. like, I've had a situation where I had to choose between letting someone uh, like do something like self harm. Like literally I've had to choose this personally, uh, somebody letting somebody self harm or using force to stop them from self harming. And that is something mm -hmm. that still sits with me because in one way, yes, um, for some people, maybe it would seem very, very easy to just say, Oh, let me just, uh, let me just do this thing and I'm going to take control. But, I respect people's place, the where they're at, and I recognize that using force can can really hurt people, and also that it's like I'm imposing my will on another being that's not me. So it's something that I would do, but that I would take with a a level of interpersonal uh, moral engagement that doesn't exist when you're talking about the we, the royal we of like whatever you want to talk about. So like I don't know. Uh, so yeah. For for example, like in a. And this is this is also the um the I think this was the same example Hans gave, but that discussion was way too inflammatory, and we, there was like that discussion was basically over at that point. But in this situation, then where there is a child who is going to like engage in self harm or kill themselves, yeah. Yeah. um, and I, I understand that from your personal perspective, what your view on that. Yeah. But if there is like if there is nobody, um, if you are not able to like intervene, for instance, yeah. do you think that the state should step in there and save that child? Uh, I mean, damn, like, I think that's a really hard question. Um, and the reason why I think that's a hard question is because I don't think, I think it depends on what type of intervention, right? Because like for some people, some people would say calling the cops is a, is a justified intervention, but I would literally, I won't advocate for people to call the police in the case of that. Please call non-emergency, call a hospital. You can literally have mm -hmm. like call anywhere except for the police. But a lot of people believe that that's like a, a thing. So I don't know. It depends on the aspect. I think that this is a really tough question because it's a question that by its nature requires context, right? Like um, in an ideal world, I would hope that there would be communities, that there isn't any situation where there would be nothing, no, nothing for that person. I mean, maybe in mm -hmm. every world that will happen. Um, it's certainly possible. I certainly believe that it's possible for a world where there's just no support and people just kill themselves with nothing. But I think that we we cross into a different we cross into a different paradigm when we start talking about like what rights the the, the state should have. Mm -hmm. If we're gonna say if we're gonna take a world that has a state in it, um, would I? God, I don't know. Like I think that's really so, hard. So like a, I can give like a like a situation then I would like context. So. Sure. Uh, this is in a non-ideal world, then obviously where the mm -hmm. community hasn't been able to step in and do the role. Sure, sure. Um, there is a there is a child, mm -hmm. and they are they're in a in a house. They're there alone. They're locked in. They have ingested a substance that's going to lead to their death. Yep. And uh, somebody knows about that. Mm -hmm. And in that situation, do you believe that they should, and do you believe that the state should that in that instance be notified? Should be allowed to go in there, break down the door, and like physically or like you know, with coercion, transport them to a place where they can get care and they can not die. I mean, in that particular context, I would say that's the only option, right? So, yeah, I would do that. If that's the only option, okay. I feel like I've been put into a, a situation, a, a very a hypothetical that's very restrictive. But, yeah, if that's... I mean, that's, it's, a, it's a pretty real situation, right? It happens like... Well, I don't know. Like, the, not in my experience. Obviously, there's a no, fuck well, ton that can be done before well, them. Preventative well, from a society, yeah, from a well, state, from a personal I, level. But I, it gets yeah. there. Quite a bit. Well, hold on a second, though. Can I can I at least speak from my yeah, perspective here? Because I feel like, I feel like thankfully, we've kind of dropped back to a more genuine conversation. And uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe you're, like, looking for, like, DGG clip mining or whatever or something. Um, that could be. That could be. I don't know. Um, I don't know much about, about that. But... Um, 
you know, I've had to deal with a lot of suicide in my life, like, uh, like mm -hmm. a lot. And, uh, for me, uh, first of all, like the situate, the chance that somebody's alone at home is like, it's really, it's actually quite uncommon. Um, most of the time there are people present. Um, most of the time it is like, there's a lot of, like a lot of suicide attempts are like very in the moment, um, and rapid decisions, like stuff like them not even having access to a gun or something can save a life. So like. Mm -hmm. So gun control is important, for instance, at least in my opinion. I mean, I think I, I have a I, my position on gun control is that um, is that I think that we need to completely in America specifically, we need a completely new gun, uh, new gun policy. I think that our gun culture, not policy, I meant to say culture, uh, gun culture. I think that there's like like guns are a huge part of it. I have a whole thing about this, but that's neither here nor there. I do agree. And here's like the euro cut coming out of me again. I mean, no, it's like I mean, gun control. like yeah, I think that there's I think there's a lot of good arguments to be made about about guns. I personally, I support people's right to own arms, but I think they should do so responsibly and I think they should do so very carefully. Um, mm -hmm. But it's a long, that's a long conversation. I always advocate for people to use gun safes and gun locks um, because uh, contrary to the NRA, I feel like I should just say this, contrary to the NRA, the chance that you're going to be in like a defending your house from burglar situation is incredibly unlikely. And that's the only reason you would never need to not have a gun locked up. If you're, if you like, if uh, somebody breaks in your house, you can go unlock it. No person, like, it's ridiculous. It's only the Republican wet dream of like fighting Antifa that you need your guns to be unlocked. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, so that aside, uh, yeah, I think that like, I think that it's tough because I don't, I don't know how frequent like person all by themselves in a house committing suicide that you receive information about it is. I don't know how frequent that mm -hmm. is. Um, maybe it I is guess the position we can like, we can extract from this is that you would agree that in situations in which state intervention is the best slash only solution by which to stop somebody from ending their life, we should we should expect the state to step in there. Yeah, I think that in in a situation like that, yes. I mean, I don't know about right. I don't know about like expecting the state. I think we should use what we have at our disposal, even if it's not perfect. Of course, obviously, like, preventative. Things yeah, are I mean, I would never better, like so I would never jump to that as a first option. But the problem is, a lot of people do. Like a lot of people's. Th this is a huge, and especially in America, I know maybe this is probably one of the areas where you know the UK has like a different, or not the UK, uh, the, the EU has much different policies with regard to like how like what roles police have than America. At least here. Um, it's shockingly common that people will call the police on their own relatives in their own house and the police will come in. Like, I mean, people in my chat are literally talking about having personal experiences with this. So like, it would never be my first reach because I think that the way that like states tend to handle crisis situations is not good. But if I had no other, if I had no other choice, of course, I'm going to choose the one that saves the life. Of course I am. Um, I just, I think that we should, uh, I think that we should fight the necessity for that and we should, uh, we should aim to have other things in place and also less risky things because in reality a lot of times what ends up happening and this is something i've again experienced very personally this is an issue that happens all the time is that people get um people get involuntarily uh institutionalized it's a it's like literally a term like uh, my friend was an emt for a while it's like they'll call it like an involuntary where basically you're deemed a danger to yourself to yourself and uh those those standards are very loose and you can be put into an institution for like three days against your will where you're functionally in prison, even if you're feeling better, even if you've overcome it and you're scared of this new environment or it could be exacerbating it, you're still put in there. That's a very, very, mm -hmm. very common solution um, in America. So mm -hmm. I think that the reliance on the state to solve these sorts of issues is troublingly problematic. Um, it's What I about a form of like state intervention that isn't like necessarily like police go in there, battering rams, break down the door, yeah, finger yeah. should you move you out. Oh. But state intervention that still like sends some forms of like agents of the state. So whether that oh, be I like mean, sick, social like, workers and stuff like yeah, that as well, with that. maybe a police officer in case it does escalate to the sense where some yeah, level yeah. of force is required. Yeah, like, I think that's, I think that's fine. Like, I, I mean, like, I don't, I don't, that's not the type of world that I advocate for. That's not the type of world that I fight for, but I recognize that like, that's something we're dealing with right now. And I'm never mm -hmm. going to put, I'm never going to put like my, um my small political qualms over somebody's life but i just don't like again the problem the problem i had with first of all with the hans conversation where this came up was that there was literally no attempt to actually hear what i'm trying to say about it and what my opinion mm -hmm. is on it i just it's not it's not that i don't think that that anybody should ever involve the state ever it's just i think the state has a lot of problems and i think that like 
especially when it comes to mental health like what we're talking about is the state being called on people who aren't 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 harming anybody like it could even be like do you know how common it is like around here for like somebody to just be like sort of talking to themselves as they walk around and they look a little scuffed and we don't even know why it could be ocd it could be tourette's it could be that they're schizophrenic and they get the cops called on them because to do a wellness check and then all of a sudden they end up in prison because maybe they panic or something like that that is a that is fucked to me and i i think that like once you get to a point where like uh, you have a society that's constantly like calling the state authorities for every issue that you functionally destroyed your social network, uh, your your ability to have a society at all because people aren't connected mm -hmm. to each other. People don't have any human connection with one another. They're all just deferring to the state. So yeah, sure. that's my sort of complicated opinion on that particular position. I just don't think it's very common that we have that particular one. But if I was in that situation, I had no choice. It was either person dies or I call someone on this vague hope that that person saves their life. Of course, I'm going to choose the, the one that has a chance at saving them for sure. Obviously. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, yeah, there was just like, um, yeah, obviously it was, uh, <laughs> that conversation was very heated. So there was never an answer to that question, which was, yeah, it was an interesting question. So I'm happy we, we were able to arrive at a, a good answer. Me too. Me too. Um, it's, it's something I do take seriously again, like that's yeah. an issue that's very close to my heart. Uh, mm -hmm. um, as many people who watch yeah. my show know, like it's something I've had to deal with a lot in my life. And so I think sometimes the solutions are, um, I think a lot of people have an approach that just like, I mean, we know there's a mental health stigma, but we have this approach that like all people who are having a mental health crisis are inherently dangerous to themselves or others. When in reality, that's not actually held up in any data. Um, some people are, of course, there are situations, but the vast majority are not. They're just kind of mm -hmm. freaking out and need some assistance of some sort. And sometimes yeah. that can just be a, a shoulder. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think I think at the end of this, like, well, we we both absolutely agree that we should 100% strive for societies in which we minimize uh, the amount of times in which, like, people are forced or coerced into doing things here and there. Yeah. Um, there are obviously still situations in which we need to recognize that, hey, because we for the for the for the best good, because of like a like a rational like decision that we make as like people. We need to be able to recognize that, hey, in some instances, we need to do something here. We need to step in here to some capacity. Yeah, yeah. And I, 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 I largely agree with that. I think there are, of course, uh, circumstances in which that's the case. Obviously, like, there's numerous analyses that go on. If I'm in a position mm -hmm. where it's like, uh, I don't know, you know, you, you the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend sort of thing. Like, uh, my enemy is death. And if, if, if it's genuinely true that in that particular example – that like getting somebody over there, even if it's a state official would help them. Well, there we go. Then the enemy of my enemy mm -hmm. is my friend. So there you go. It's just that I just, I think again, I think there's uh, a lot of, a lot of times there's an attempt to make hypotheticals that I don't think are very honest or avoid talking about the issues that I'm talking about. But I think in this case, that's not a great, you know, that's not one of them. All right. Excellent. Well, yeah, Second. that was uh, about it. I mean, there was a, <laughs> there was a hell of a lot that there was notes on here that didn't get touch on, but that conversation would probably would Ooh. require professional trainers to ensure that we don't get fucking dehydrated and worn out. So yeah, maybe. I'll probably put that one on the, on the back burner. Yeah, but, no, but listen, yeah. listen, I, not everyone can be a nine hour streamer. No, I get it. But, uh, uh, I guess no. Yeah, no. It's all good. It's all good. I'm just teasing. Um, all right. Well, was there any other hot, hot and spicy memes you wanted to grill me on? You want to, you want to hit me with anything else? That was about it. Do you have any hot and spicy memes you want to grill me on? Um, no, I mean, I don't really have all that much. Like, I, I don't know. I, I can see we have some sort of fundamental differences about like how po like 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 how we calculate power in politics, but you know that's natural. Uh, sock Dems and sock Dems and anarcho leaning people uh, tend to tend to have those disagreements. Um, but uh, but I mean I don't know. I'm glad we got to talk on, on some things. I'm glad we were able to calm it down at the end. And I hope uh, I hope I hope your uh, create your curiosity about my positions was was sated. Uh, I don't know. I don't really know of any other like. I don't really go hunting for like hot takes to take down. So I don't really have any hot takes of yours to take down, but yeah, you know. that's because I have no hot takes. All my takes True. are immediately agreeable because they're, they're just, correct. they're just ice cold. That's how they are. All of them come out as cold as the fucking Arctic ice. There we everyone, go. No, here's the thing. Everyone thinks they're hot, but they're just the right kind of hot. So they're hot away. Wait, wait a minute. And then they think about for a second. Like, ah, it's, it's delayed but... burn. So it's like the, uh, what True. you're saying is it's like the, uh, <laughs> Well, I was going to say a, a uh, warhead, like the candy, where they're sour and then oh. they're sweet, but I don't know. This is hot. So, all right. Well, yeah, uh, Rose Wrist, it was good talking with you. Uh, if there's no other memes, yeah. uh, let's uh, let's call it here, huh? 
Yep, that was about it. All right. All right. You want, to plug, I... you, want to, you want to shout yourself out before you go? Yep, sure. My name is Roserist. YouTube, just check it out. Roserist, two words. And uh, I also have a website, and I see that we too are the brave dot com fighters against all these disgusting dot ggers. Um, so yeah, roserist dot com there as well. And yep, yeah, same goes to you. So right. feel free to name me. Yeah, uh, my name is Demon Mama. If you want to find out more or you want to poke my brain, you can come by demonmama dot com. It's a similar site to what Roserist has. Love to talk to you. Uh, come say hi. All right, thanks for talking. All right. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye -bye. You too. All right. All right. All right. Well, well, well. We finished that conversation. That was interesting. That was certainly an interesting conversation for sure. Um, it went a lot of directions I didn't really expect. Uh yeah, uh, I I don't know what was going on. Some of those 